Hello, hello. Hi, guys. All right. So today we are with Jill, the world's most prepared woman. Except my she daughter didn't give me any questions. We're still, I'm supposed drives to be around with a whole household <laughs> in her oh, trunk. I do, don't. I forgot about my trunk. 370, 75, 365 days a year. I do. I do. I don't recommend it. Now, to my defense, <laughs> I have gotten stranded in many different conditions. Still don't recommend And needed everything that's in the trunk. Um, okay, oh. so for those of you who don't know, my mother and me too have been through pretty much every scenario you could go through. I don't know, mom, I guess maybe hasn't been through floods, but tornadoes and um, blizzards and single parent, job loss, sickness, that thing going around, pretty much everything that you could handle in life. So we asked what you wanted to know. And so we're going to answer your questions today. So we're going to start with prepping type questions. And then we are going to move to uh, regular questions, so to speak. Um, we had a lot of people ask. So and one thing, too, uh, sometimes we can't get to all the questions on the live stream just for time or we miss something. And if ever you guys want, need to, just email us, go to our website at the contact, up at the contact and email us. Or if you want to ask me something, go to the website and go to any post on there and type in the comments and ask me your question. Cause I'm the one that does all the comments on the website and I'll see it. So, you know, don't get upset if we don't get your question answered, just go do that. Cause we try to do as many as we can. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's just we got so yeah. many. All right. So we're going to get started. Um, do you have an easy way to convert pantry inventory to how many meals it will make? Well, you just have to look at the servings of what you've got on there. In other words, I have 10 cans of tuna and I can get for me, I can get three meals out of those 10 cans. So that's 30 meals now. Just a second. So the big cans of tuna, just so you know, because we had this. I did, did a little. I know, but that's one serving. Yeah. It's not three. It's one serving on the can. But just so you know, that if you want actual serving size, it's the big cans of tuna are actually three servings, which is 210 calories. The small can of tuna is 70 calories, and that's one serving. So just so you know. And so. But, you, but she stretches it. Yeah, I, I usually stretch it. I make it into two. You know, I add pickles or something like that, and it makes two meals for me. So, and that's another thing. Watch, even with the serving size, in a desperate situation, you have to stretch your food. You can stretch that much farther than the actual serving size. Yeah, tuna is using being used as a flavoring and not actually protein yeah. for your body. Yeah, because I will put it in a cream sauce. And when I put a small can of tuna in the cream sauce, I can get three meals out of that easy. So you can stretch it like that. Now, um, so you just look like on your peach can, if it's two and a half servings and you've got 10 cans of peaches, that means that you've got over 20 meals, you know, closer to like 25 meals or so. And so that's how you just take each section and add up what you've got on that count up how many cans you have, what the serving size is, multiply it and there's your meals that you have i yep. hope that helps yeah so basically you just have to add up how many servings are on your food and then divide it by how many people and then you know how many days you have so hello jack's friends i know you're watching because he's coming <laughs> Hi, to you make guys <laughs> who's watching is it connor hey annie. connor hello, hey connor. annie <laughs> uh okay uh caroline wants to know how do you know when to save and when to take the opportunity to stock up before prices go up so i think she's mean save money yeah okay what i i would do like half and half i would say you've got 20 extra dollars that week you could take ten dollars and put in savings and then take the other ten dollars and buy the extras i always 
kind of divide my money up like that when I'm in a situation like that. I don't put everything in all or nothing in one thing and not the other. I try to divide it up. Yep. All right. Next wrong screen. Sorry. If you could leave one thing behind for family and friends and strangers, neighbors, what would it be? Water, food, weapons, or a Bible? What's your answer? Amy wants to know. Uh, well, I would probably leave the Bible, first of all. Um, yeah, that's what I would leave. Because I guess that part of my life is the most important part of my life. God is the most important part of my life. And if you have him, he will supply those other needs for you and help protect you. And he's always said he'll take care of your niece if, you know, you're his child. Okay. And um, we got the comment that Julie just redid her pantry inventory after their move and figured out the serving sizes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what you got to do. Take the serving sizes and multiply them by the amount of cans yeah. you have. Is it, I didn't get the name on this one, but they want to know, is it easier to keep a list of foods and expiration dates? Is it easier to keep a list of foods and expiration dates for the stocked pantry? So she has it as a question mark. I have no idea what she's asking. Uh, <laughs> is well, it easier to keep a list of foods and expiration dates for a stocked pantry? I I, I would just write on your what, tuna yeah, can. What I do, date. I don't. I have all my cans in flat, those little flat two inch boxes. And I have them stacked on my shelf, just like two deep, sometimes three deep, but I can see what, what each one box has in it. And I put the, new, the oldest first at the front and I just pull it out like that. But the thing is I write on the side and on the top, the expiration date. That way, no matter how I stack them in the pantry, I'll be able to see it either on the side or the top. It's all prepared. And it's and I use a black marker because that way, at a glance, I can see what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And put the expiration date. Don't put the date that you bought it. I mean, oh, I guess yeah, you no. can, but don't make it harder for yourself. Yeah, People just, put the day they bought it, and then you have to figure, okay, three years, two years, what time? Yeah, no, just no, put the expiration just put the date. Expiration date. Mm -hmm. Then if it's like a can of tuna, you know the can of tuna says it expires 10, 22. Okay, so I've got eight years left <laughs> between, mm -hmm. you know, 10, 20, 22. Or if you want to put the longest expiration date on there, you could do eight or I mean, 1030 instead of 1022. And then, you know, you have until 1030, which is eight years past the expiration date to eat your tuna. So you can do it however, yeah. um, you know, however it works easiest for you. All right. Don't make it complicated, yeah. guys. Try to keep it really simple. I'm going to do a video on because that. Because if, you if you don't keep it simple and easy, you're not going to do it. That's with anything in life. If it's not simple and easy, you'll just give up and quit. So try to keep yeah. it as simple as possible. Uh, Charles wants to know, how many friends do you need to prepare to have when times get hard? Not a lot, <laughs> but a few. Yeah, you know. know, yeah, and I wouldn't work too hard at that. I mean, even if you have just acquaintances, like now I've just moved recently into my neighborhood and I have gone and introduced myself to three of my neighbors so far. I haven't had a whole lot of contact with them other than that. But when I talk to them the first time, if I had a need, I know that I could go to them. I also told them when I introduced myself that if ever you need anything to let me know and I would be glad to help, you know. And so that's what I did. So I don't know them really, really well, but at least they know who I am, that I'm, you know, and a few things about me and they were very friendly and they were very nice themselves. So it's not a matter of having a whole lot of close friends uh, that helps to have two or three, at least close friends, but just some acquaintances or family members or something that, that you can turn to if you have to in an emergency. Yes. Um, Tina wants to know, some of those cans have numerous dates on them and they make no sense. I cannot figure out the expiration date. So the first date is the date it was manufactured. The second date is the date it expires. But that's actually, so someone else said, isn't that a best buy date? Yes, it's actually a best buy date. The majority of the time, unless your can is dented, 
open or bulging, the food is fine in a can for eight to 10 years past the expiration date. The, the taste may get a little off, but honestly, when we were moving, I had, I had tomatoes that were 10 years expired and we ate them just fine. Yeah. Up to 10 years, the taste will be probably fine, but yeah. it's when you get into 20 years, my mom actually had friends that would keep theirs for 20 years. She had some yeah. stuff for 20 years. Now, yeah. you know, we don't necessarily recommend that, yeah. but it, the worst thing that happens to that food is the flavor gets really bad. Judy wants to know, I have dried milk that's expired. Is it safe to use? Oh yeah. Dried yeah. milk that goes yeah. beyond the canned foods. You can use that almost, you know, well, I don't know that for a long years, but. not 30 years, but for a long, <laughs> long time. It's not like rice that you can store yeah. for eternity, but I've kept it like 10 years yeah. or more past the expiration yeah. date. Uh, where do you keep your important documents, birth certificate, deed to the house in a lockbox at the bank? Question mark. I don't. I have uh, one of those little uh, fireproof boxes that I mostly am concerned about fire. I've seen them now since I've gotten mine that they have them where I think they're protected from fly, fire and flood. And I think that would be an even better one if you can find those. I can't even remember where I saw them at now. So no, I don't keep it at the bank. I just keep those. Another thing I do is, and I need to remember to do this, is you can take uh, pictures of the documents, send them to your kids or somebody you you know, you're close to like that and have a second copy of it with so at somebody else's house like that. I like having a double co copy of that. I do the same thing with my money. I don't keep my money all right there in my home. If a tornado came by and took everything, I'd be in a pickle. So I divide it up with people I trust, like both my kids, you know, I divide it up with them and, and kind of spread it out a little bit. So for those of you who don't know, mom used to live in Kansas. Now we're in Wyoming. A tornado is probably not going to hit, but <laughs> that's right. I forget where I'm at. To live I'm still in Kansas. <laughs> Weather-wise, I'm still in Kansas. <laughs> um, we have lived many. Okay. Uh, on to inflation type things. Does, and several other people want to know, has your grocery budget increased from $80 a month? Uh, no, not too much. I haven't noticed that either. I've... I haven't changed a whole lot. No. And the only thing I've done as far as the inflation goes is uh, I love Ritz crackers and they've gone up a little bit. So what I've done was I've changed over now to buying Walmart brand of Ritz crackers. <gasps> I know. And, but I found out I can't tell that much difference. There's so no difference. it's not bothered me at all. And so I've just done maybe two things or three things like that. And that's it. No yeah. more than that. I'm still doing fine. Yeah. Uh, on Our budget. grocery bill hasn't gone up yet either. Yeah. Uh, Tina wants to know, is rice, beans, and pasta safe to store in original bags inside five gallon buckets for long periods? That's the way I'm storing mine. That's how we store them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're talking 25 years, then go ahead and put them in a Mylar bag with an oxygen with absorber, but I don't waste time and energy no. doing that kind of stuff. So if you want to, that's fine, but I don't. The way I figure it, okay, I've got enough food at this point for a couple of years. Maybe I might go up to three, four years, but I'm figuring out, figuring that after a couple of years, if things are that bad, you're going to have to come up with a different solution yeah. to support and take care of yourself than just mm -hmm. living totally off that long term off of your food. Mm -hmm. uh, things are just going to be so bad if you're having to do that, that there's going to be worse things happening yeah. than a food shortage. Yep, she is right. Transformation Station wants to know, has your electric gone up? Ours went up three times. She immediately thought of us. No more AC, she says. I haven't gotten my bill for the month, but last month's, actually, it's hard to say. Last month's was the lowest bill I've ever had in the summer before in my whole life. Uh, in Kansas, usually it's runs, it was really high in Kansas, like 125 sometimes a month. It was $37 last month here. So I haven't noticed that it's gone up yet. Has ours gone up, Mike? My water bill is the same. I don't think so. Well, the thing is, it always goes up when we're in the air conditioner. But, but you don't remember what it was last year? I don't even know. Mike doesn't was. think our bill has gone up, but he's not positive. He doesn't remember what it was last I, year. This is our first year in this house. Well, I mean, 
first summer. Total summer summer where we have a bill from last year to, mm -hmm. to do that. So, um, yeah. So anyway, we have. Now, here's another thing about the bills going up. I called on my water because the the price didn't go up, but the chart they show where I used more had doubled and I used the same amount of water. So I called him. He said, well, ma'am, you haven't even used the minimum amount yet. So it's hard for me to tell when something goes up because I half the time don't even use the minimum amount that they charge me for. You know, the, they have a base that everybody pays no matter what you use. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so Which that's is why you I need to be watering your yard. <laughs> She's hollering at because I have water in my yard. No, let's put the. <laughs> I watered it today. 40 now, see, years. You, you guys are witnesses. 40 years. Do you know what I've heard for 40 years? Oh, I wish I could have <coughs> green grass where I could just walk in my toes and just have nice, beautiful green grass. And it's oh, brown. I wish I didn't have to haul hoses all over the place. <laughs> she has nice green grass and a sprinkler system now and refuses to use it. <laughs> no, I've used it today. I used it today. So see, she's yeah, cute. The cactus. Yes, oh. the cactus are starting to come up. So um, that's it. Keep it down as low as you can all the time. And, you know, you won't have to worry about that quite as much. Um, let's see. And then we have, I'm sorry, I lost it here. See, you were scolding your mother. Yeah, this you better believe it. 40 years I've listened to you <laughs> holler about not having a yard and hauling I hoses. Have, I have to be honest, I have hollered. 40 years. And I finally get a sprinkler system. I'm thinking, do I have the money to use this? Yes, you do. You're <sighs> not even using the minimum amount of, well, of that's water. True. I, that's why I watered it today. Yeah. And when was the last time you watered? Well, it it's rained Saturday. Degrees. It rained Saturday, but I did Wednesday before that. <laughs> it's not enough in Wyoming for those of you oh. who need to know. Okay, T Cider says, "Turn Jill in from England, and my mom grew my ma'am grew up in World War II and ignored mm -hmm. expiration dates on cans. She said she wouldn't have eaten half the time in World War II if she had looked at them." Exactly. Yeah. Well, you guys have to realize yeah. before what was it, um, 1985 or 90 yeah. or something like that, they didn't put expiration dates on the yeah. can. It's hard for most people to realize we just kept the food in the cabinet and we didn't ever worry about it. Yeah. You just use that food. You've never wasted food. And we waste so much food since they put those expiration dates on. It's just really... Yeah really sad. Andrew says, I'm a retired disabled veteran in the UK living on my own. Your channel has helped me so much. Thank you. Well, well you're thank welcome. Thank you. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a testimony. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people that have tried our tips and stuff. And we get so excited when it, you know, they had the yep. best testimonies and I'm really kind of, I am proud of you guys because you actually try them and use them, you know, and that a lot of people just read this stuff or listen to us and they just let it fluff off, mm -hmm. but you guys yeah. actually use them. And don't forget guys, dining on a dime cookbooks, 25% off. If you want to save money in your grocery bill, this is how our grocery bill has not gone up. And a lot of viewers, a lot have told us the same thing. Yes. And speaking so, of not wasting food, we have a leftovers uh, index in here that you go in there. If you have leftover mashed potatoes, if you have leftover what salad, if you have leftover this or that, you look in that and we'll give, we have recipes in the book that you can go to and use those things in because they've done studies and 50% of the food people buy, they throw out. Can you imagine you spend $400 a month on groceries and you throw out $200 automatically? You could save that much. Yeah. Bird says, I have to buy low sodium and low carb products, which makes it easier yet harder because there are a few products to choose. So as far as the low sodium, you can buy the regular ones and just rinse off the juices, the sodium off the juices. Yeah. And that will take probably 90% of it off. So yeah. I would not spend extra money on low sodium specialty items if no. it's a canned good in like a juice or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, Tina says, I went to the grocery store today in uh, Atlantic Canada here. I don't know where Atlantic Canada, maybe she means Alberta. I don't know. Anyway, butter is $7.99 a pound. Grocery stores were unreal. I shopped the outside perimeter store and only bought sale items. That's the thing. We don't buy butter at $7.99. It's on sale we for $2 sale. this week. Mm -hmm. if, if I had something I want or need ago, I, and it's not on yeah. sale, I don't, I do without it. Shortening, olive oil, lard, coconut oil, 
vegetable oil, canola oil, any of those oils will work instead for 90%. And then what I would do is just save the butter to put like a little bit on my toast just to taste it mm -hmm. or something like that. I would not use mm -hmm. it for cooking. Shortening could be used. Margarine could be used. Start using that. baking grease, guys. Yeah, baking grease. That's, yeah. they'll save you so much using that leftover baking grease. You know, there's again, where you're throwing out leftover food. Yeah. Uh, Tammy says her bill has not gone up since following our advice. It has actually gone down. Oh, good. Wow. Not to say that inflation isn't happening, but changed my buying habits. Very it good. Makes a difference. That is great. You guys will last a lot longer through this if you can start some of these habits now, you know, yeah. just by doing that. I think it's Leticia. I'm not quite sure. Received my cookbook today. She thinks it's so cool. Oh, Hello thank you. from Wickenburg, Arizona. Thank you. Very good. Yay. Um, have we had rolling outages this summer yet? Like so many people? No, not yet. No. We haven't. Thankfully. Mm -mm. So waiting for it to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Although today's the hottest day of the year, I think. And so hopefully from here, it's going to be down for us here mm -hmm. in Wyoming. So hopefully. So um, what? Okay. So Mike said, well, but we had a bill from July of last year, didn't we? Or no. no. Oh, yeah. Mike said our electric from the people that were before us actually have gone down significantly. So um, Trash Treasure says I'm having a yard sale this weekend, trying to get a lot of stuff. Gone. Good idea. Very, Very good. good. Yeah, that's what you do. Um, Let's see. Kimberly says she's seen people that say they keep their thermostat at 69 in the summer. Absolutely cannot imagine what their bill would be. That's just wasteful. And that is absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sorry. There's no reason anyone, even with health problems, 77, 78 should be the absolute lowest. I'm sorry. I have lived in Texas. It was still 78 in Texas. I have lived in Kansas. It's still 78 in Kansas. That's just wasteful and frankly selfish to be and honest most days but, i haven't even used my ac yet and the temperature in my house is 80 degrees but i just have a fan and i don't even notice it yeah. so 69 would be freezing to me put on a fan if you feel like you're yeah. feeling hot but it's just that fans blowing. that fan circulated and mm -hmm. if you have to use something on your ac use just the a house fan you know that does it through the whole house yes and we used to at our old a uh, Victorian house in Kansas that I grew up in, we would block off doors and block off windows and only have one air conditioner in a little tiny area. Yeah. Um, and so you may have to be blocking off sections of your house mm -hmm. and not cool it all. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that just may have to be the way of life. And Debbie says she stopped using the dryer, only hanging clouds, only hanging clothes out. I use a quarter cup of vinegar in the water and everything is soft. Very good. Yes. yes. People think that your clothes are really stiff when you hang them on the line and not do them in the dryer. But if you, I use fabric softener, you can use vinegar. And if you put them out on a nice windy day, that wind blows them and dries them. They get, they get softer than you can imagine. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a tumbling mm -hmm. type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and another thing, if you're worried about the sti stiffness too, tumble them for five minutes or less in the dryer yeah. before you hang them out. And use it, fabric softener. Yeah. And you don't use that much. Yeah. You're using less in the dryer, but you're getting the softness too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Carrie says, hi guys, I'm so happy to finally caught you live. I have all your books, been following us for 17 oh, years. Oh my word. Wow. That's almost from the beginning. <laughs> wow. My word. That's great. Uh, um, let's see. Um, somebody says, I've always agreed pretty much with everything, but not on air conditioning issues for certain illnesses. I can't think of one illness that you can't have it set on 78. Yeah. Well, I have chronic fatigue yeah. syndrome and I I, heat bothers tar and I both. Yeah horribly really really bad yeah. and we've done just fine you know without it especially if you start using the fan yeah, just use if the you fan. learn how to do you know things a certain way you'll be yeah. fine do we recommend keeping a sleeping bag in case the grid goes down connie wants to know a sleeping bag in the house you mean mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah i keep I one keep in my a, car that's what i keep a tent in the house so in mm -hmm. the winter we don't have a backup heat system 
So in the winter, if our heat goes out, I keep a tent and sleeping bags so we can sleep in the tent and our body heat will keep yeah. us warm in yeah. there. Uh, let's see. Vicki says our AC bill was $40. We live in the high desert. It gets up to 100 degrees. Wow. wow that's that's good. very good. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Um, and you see all the panic everybody's feeling. You can or you know, worried about, you can tell with our viewers that um, they're doing things that are yeah. making it okay. You can make it through this stuff if you don't get afraid, if you don't panic, and you just start thinking of yeah. ways to do these things. Yeah, Carrie says she just got so excited about the shout out that she was waving at her phone. At <laughs> oh dear. That's well, that hilarious. is something. Some of you guys have been with us for every uh, four things. Uh, uh, do we ever discount the gluten-free book? No, not that often. Occasionally, maybe at Christmas, Mother's Day, we might, but we don't that often. Um, just because it was a super difficult book to write. And so um, I don't usually mm -hmm. discount that much. Uh, Big M says, boy, if you want to experience some cold AC, go to the doctor's office. The nurses are always wearing sweaters. I'm sorry. If people are wearing sweaters, you got the AC way too Yeah. Long. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Too. Yeah. Mike said they do that at the library too. Mm -hmm. That's, I'm sorry. That's just absolutely ridiculous. A lot of places do do that. And that's what mm -hmm. frustrates me. Everybody's worried about these uh, brownouts, blackouts, whatever you want, to, the, the grid going down. These places are not turning their stuff down and they're going to have to start. I remember, I'll tell this real quick. Can I tell a real quick story? When the, I said, told you this before, but when the kids were little, they had this, oh, it's going to, we're going to have problems with the electricity. You've got to turn, everybody has to not use their electricity. You can't have Christmas lights or anything. And the kids would go to school with their heavy coats on because they turned the, the, stuff down so low they were freezing in school mm -hmm. but las vegas did not turn out one light bulb it was lit up to beat the band and everybody was a little uptight because places like that they kept doing the same stuff yeah so you know it's yep. these businesses and things like that's going to have to start and luann says i have heart failure and i keep my thermostat at 80 but then um Let's see. Don says, I have MS, which is horrible in the heat, and I still keep the thermostat at 78. But then I have many autoimmune dis uh, disorders, Ricky says, and can't function in any heat or humidity. I agree with the concept and always did conserve all my life until I got sick. I'm sorry. It's an excuse. Mom and I have autoimmune diseases up the wazoo. We have never turned the heat down from 78. It's still an excuse. So this is where, okay, oh, dear. <laughs> this is where we get frustrated with people who are on disability and social security and they refuse to do things like that they keep their ac at 65 because they have to you do not have to i'm sorry i have an autoimmune disease put on a fan turn your ac up you are just acclimated to it every yeah. week every three days Turn your AC up one more degree mm -hmm. until you get acclimated to. to it. Yeah. But it is just an excuse. And when people email us saying how they can't afford to live on Social Security, they can't afford to live on, on disability, they are not doing everything they can to save money. So I'm sorry, but this is a tough love moment here mm -hmm. because guys, times are really going to start it's getting back. Get, and you it's need to start, start getting, back. getting used to it now because when it, you can't go straight from where you're at now to nothing. So you better start doing, moving that th thermostat up or down, whichever direction yeah. to start getting used to it. It's a matter of comfort too. Sometimes you may just have to sit in the front of the fan and that's not maybe as comfortable as having your AC going full blast. But if it's that bad, go to the library then. Yeah. I used you to know? do that all the time. Yeah. I would, at the heat of the day, I would go to the library and read books or take my sewing. I would make sure I do my shopping and in the heat of the day, because I would be inside stores that were cooler. You see, Instead of making an excuse why you can't do these things, start thinking, what can I do? Yeah. Yeah. That's why mom and I have a no excuse policy. I'm sorry. We have lived in extreme, in extreme poverty, about as low as you can get in America. And oh, we yeah. made it through. Yeah. So that's why we have below. no patience with that. I'm Most really sorry. people but, for years yeah. on disability and social security yeah. were making way more than what I lived off of. Yeah. Nope. As a matter of fact, 
we got to talking with the pastor at church this week for the first time. And he happened upon our show. It's like, <laughs> oh, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> but he asked, you know, do you guys do classes and stuff at church? And I said, no, I really don't because I don't have the patience yeah. to do classes and stuff because you get these people who are whining and making excuses. And I'm like, sorry, there is no excuse. Mm -hmm. You do not. I had one lady tell me that she went through a gallon of milk a day because that's what her toddler needed. You see, there's, no, a, there's a difference here. Some are saying, what can I do to do fix this? And those are the people we really, really want to help. Then there's others saying, well, I can't do this because, because, and because, and, and they keep on with the excuses. And until you make up your mind, it's like an addiction. Until you make up your mind that I need help and I really want help, there's not a whole lot we can do to help you. I, I hate that, but there's not. Yeah. So we're trying to help the people here that, that say, I really want to figure out how to do this. What can I do? Yeah. Glenda says, I love both of you. Thanks to your channel and cookbooks. Oh, 25% <laughs> Thank now. You. I have been able to pay off all my credit card debt and accrue Way thousands in savings. Oh, my goodness. Very wow. good. Very yes, see, good. you guys are doing mm -hmm. so good. Katie says, compared to third world countries, everyone in America is rich. Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why I have no excuses. I and just... see, I went years with no AC. I didn't yeah. have... I had a little air conditioner that I could use in one room, but then I could only use it for maybe an hour or two during the day. So I survived with no AZ at mm -hmm. all, let alone, and in Kansas. Yep. yep. Um, and let me check. Yeah, lots of people have their AC set higher, and they're doing just mm -hmm. fine. It's just a matter of what you get used to. You have to and, just get used to it. Yeah. yeah, and when I'm doing something outside and I come in, and I'm just – horribly hot, I'll just turn the fan on mm -hmm. and blow it instead of turning the air conditioner down. And, so. and sometimes it would be yeah. over a hundred and I would get that hot, really hot. So I just take a shower and it would cool yeah. me down instantly. And we, Mike and I keep our thermostat at 68 in the, in the winter. What do you keep yours? Someone wants to know. Um, I'm trying to think mm -hmm. in the winter. Yep. Oh, I oh I know what I keep it at. I keep it at like 62 to 63, and then I turn it down at night lower. Okay. I was trying to think what season am I in, so. Um, and then now we're getting into other types of questions. Julie wants to know, no, Rhonda wants to know, do you have a recipe for older, exhausted, nervous wreck mother, grandmother who has three grown kids in the house, mom's free rent, maid service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year hotel. Do I have a recipe? No, but we got some tough love coming to you. <laughs> Here, Mike, thumbnail. <laughs> you mean a recipe just for she a She means meal? what does she do to take for care a mom of who's a worn out nervous okay. wreck because she's the maid. She's giving her grown adult children free rent. Okay. I'll, I'll be honest with you. This, this could be a very, very, oh, I get this question really all Almost the time. Day, yeah. I do. I do on the comments on the website and I've answered it a ton. So, Oh, I'm going to put Mike on the spot. I don't know if you can find him. I think if you, if you type in adult children on the website, yeah. I cover it thoroughly in details and you might even read some of the comments on there that I answer questions on the comments and cover even more in the comments on mm -hmm. those two posts because it, it, it can be very long and very involved to try to make a short version of this is I used to always have sympathy with the poor moms that were going through this. And then I realized and I would say, you know, this is maybe what you could do. And this is maybe what you can do to get them out and everything. But then I, I got to, after years of dealing with this same issue over and over again, it was always sounded like it was the kids when they would write in that was causing the whole problem. They're mooching off a of mom. They're not helping me do anything around the house. They're not lifting a finger. They're just playing video games. And poor me, what am I supposed to do? It dawned on me. Mom, I try to do this as gently and kindly as I can. But like Tara said, with tough love, 
it's part of your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. Yeah, it's totally your fault. Because you can say no. Yeah. You know, you're still the mom. You're still the boss. It's your well, it's home. It's your home. It's and not it's your, your money. children's home. And it's your money. You. Why are you still just doing the same thing, hitting your head against the wall over and over again by giving them the money, giving them money, letting them stay there? You just have to say no. You aren't getting any money from me this week. Now, if you want to give them a week or two to find a job, but say at the end of this week, no more and hold, stick to it. Don't give them, let them give you another excuse for staying another excuse. You stick to it, but you stop paying them the money. Yeah. You don't even need to, don't buy their food. If you have to lock, lock the cabinets, lock the food up or not buy any more food and you just go out to eat for a while. Yeah. I don't care what you have to do. Uh, if you have to have the police come, if it's really bad and have to have the police come to remove them from the house, yeah. it's your responsibility. It's not your responsibility to take care of them. It's your responsibility to get them out, to learn to live on their own, to stand on their two feet, their own two feet mm -hmm. and be responsible. And I know it's hard with grandkids. I know it's hard to think you're kicking your grandkids out on the street, but you're not responsible for taking care of your grandkids. Your children are, and you're, you're being abusive in a way to those adult children because you're not allowing them to be responsible and you're not making them step up to the plate to take care of their children. They're going to get, by, they're like little kids. My kids, if I would give them a candy bar and then they come begging, can I have another candy bar? Can I never, and just to get them out of my hair, I give them another candy bar and they keep begging. They'll keep doing that, begging for that candy bar as long as I'm giving it to them. They'll just keep doing it because they've got you well trained yeah. is what they do. They should so, be doing the dishes. They should be vacuuming. They should be doing all the cleaning. They should be doing cooking. That's the exception. They should be buying the groceries. They should be giving you money for utilities. All the yard work. They yeah. should be doing all the work for you, especially if they're not working at all. If they're working, they need to be paying half of everything, depending on how many is living with you. If there's one with you, then they should be paying half of it. Yeah. You know, at minimum, and you start doing stuff like that, they're going to rethink, well, maybe I could live on my own instead of having to pay mom's half mm -hmm. all the time. So I hate to use tough love on this, but it, it really is you having to step up to the plate. Yeah. And we're not talking about but disabled children or anything no, like that. That's we what totally we're talking about. Understand that. We are talking, talking about, about able bodied adults. And depression is not an excuse either. No, because Sorry. you are even it's not. You're even no. enabling that depression because the more especially a man, the more he doesn't work and doesn't have to be responsible and, and do that, you're taking something out of him. Men, they even though they don't like to work they, their ego comes from their job a lot of times. And so by not forcing your son, especially to get a job, you're, you're causing more depression for him. So part of it is all this is all linked together. Yeah. That's why I say, go check, uh, mm -hmm. the, go to the website, type in adult children. I have more ways to take care of things and more answers on there. Yeah. And somebody said a true story. A mom gave notice to her adult son. I'm moving. You need to find yourself a place to live. If you have to move, I, I would. Yeah. It. I was going to say, sell, sell, the, house, house and sell the house from yep. under them. If you, if yep. I don't care if you've been to that house for 40 years, mm -hmm. if you have, you have to take, if you yep. love those kids enough, you will take drastic measures to do it. Yep. And I would take and write an eviction notice and file it with the courthouse. And tell them they have 30 days to be out. What it boils down to is a lot of parents are afraid that their kids aren't going to like them. They, they just don't want to be harsh with them. They don't. My kids aren't going to like me if I make them toe the line. If I even when they're younger, they don't like to discipline the kids because they are afraid the kids won't like them. And that you're loving yourself more than you're loving that child. You're yeah. loving your feelings. You're loving what's important to you more than you're loving that child and you can't do that anymore yep um let's see shannon says my mother-in-law thought we were saving my oldest kids rent money so that they would be surprised when they moved out she was so wrong i told her she is an adult it goes towards the bills and she thinks i'm a horrible person sorry 
Yep. That's what that I do. Did, I yeah, do not give my kids do. their rent money back. They are adults. Yep. We do let them stay until about 20, 21, but they are paying rent. We give them until they're 19 and then they start paying rent after that. And each year the rent goes up. And they're out by 22, 23 is when they need to definitely yeah, so see, be That's out, the way so. you need to start. And what happened is most people don't start when they're younger. So you guys really need to start. Those of you that have younger yeah. kids, you know, you need to start now yeah. doing yeah. this type of thing. Uh, my mom has two kids, my brother and I, and I have four kids ages 25 to 13. So that's uh, what we have and I have six grandkids. Next question. Julie, dear Jill, besides faith and keeping news at bay, how do you stay so positive? <laughs> oh. Please keep doing the videos. You're making a difference. Well, you know, I was thinking of that the other day. There's a story I that's on the website. It's called, I think, The Ordinary Day. And it talks about enjoying an ordinary day, even if things go wrong, even if the kids mil spill milk, chocolate or chocolate milk all over the floor, enjoy those ordinary days. And I was thinking about this the other day with everything that's going on. I thought, I, I'm not going to sit here and worry about this or think about this. I'm going to get up and go in my sewing room, sort of sewing room and do something fun with my fabric. I'm not going to just dwell on this. I'm going to live my life normal, what I call normal, as normal as possible all day long until something come, really comes up and affects me very, you know, then you have to readjust to your situation. But why am I worrying about what's happening in a hundred different countries and all over different areas? It's okay for me where I'm at. You're, if you if you concentrate on all those things, you can enjoy what God's blessed you with. God has blessed you with with an ordinary, wonderful day. Don't spoil it or ruin it by uh, worrying and being depressed and anxious and fearful over this. Thank him for that ordinary day and live it and enjoy it as much as you can. Yep. Did that answer the question? I don't oh. know. <laughs> uh, Matilda ma or Madeline, I have no idea what this name is. I'm sorry. Uh, if you were a young mom again and had to go through all you have been through, what, if anything, would you do different? And do you think it would be easier or harder to raise Tara and her brother now? Thank you for all you do. Love the name. Oh, it's Denmark. It's Danish. No wonder I can't oh. pronounce it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for massacring your name in Denmark. You know, I can't really think of a whole lot of anything I would do different. Um off the top of my head. I'm sure there has to be something, but off the top of my head, I can't really think of anything. The thing is, God's been a big part of my life. Now I had to learn things like I had a temper when I was a young mom and I prayed and prayed and prayed. And finally I overcame that, you know, overcame. I didn't abuse the kids necessarily, but I just, you know, would get upset about things. I learned to do that. Uh, worry about things. I stopped doing that years and years ago. And I wish I could have stopped those things earlier, you know, instead of it taking me so long. But there's not really any of the decisions I made. I always prayed very carefully and I would not step out and do anything until I had the security that that's what God wanted me to do on all my major, major decisions. Do I think it would be harder to raise my kids now? I don't think so. I think it would be much easier to raise my kids now because when I was doing all of this, I had, there was not a, like a ton of food banks. There were not, there wasn't any food banks no, back then. I don't no, think. you didn't yeah. go on Medicaid. You didn't, uh, you just didn't have anything like that. I had only the money that I brought in that week from working and nothing more. And, you know, I didn't really have a whole lot of help any any other way from the government or anything. And so I didn't have there's medical things now that you can have. I had a little bit of medical help with the kids because in Kansas, uh, if there's an emergency or something, the kids are covered up to the age of 18. But other than that, I didn't have medical for myself. 
but no, it would have been it would have been easier, much easier for me to raise the kids now. Yeah, there's so many programs. Now. Yeah, there's yeah. so much for things. Heather, would you recommend getting out of credit card debt or keeping the money in savings for what's to come? So I would have at least enough savings to cover five thousand dollars if your car poops out on you. And then I would pay all the credit card because where people stop, where people get in trouble is they don't have a emergency money and they keep using their credit card to fund their emergency money is what they keep doing. So you I, that, have, you've got to get that credit card yeah. stuff because you are paying interest on there. It's huge. And I would get out of that as fast as you can. And I may be now TARS is 5,000 in case you need a car. And that makes sense for, but if you're not working and having to drive to work every day and you're, it depends on the situation like that, you maybe could get by with only $2,000 if you're not worried about a car or something major yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's the only difference so that I would So like do. a major appliance, if you need to replace your refrigerator or something like that, you can do without a washer and dryer, but a refrigerator, I mean, Mike and I have lived without a refrigerator. But you can live without them, yeah. but you know. But even at that, I bought a refrigerator just recently and it was $500. Yeah, you can get it used. So it's not so. like you need thousands and thousands of dollars. You don't need to replace it with the top of the line refrigerator. No. no. Um. Will you be, okay, uh, Pedro says, I have Penny Pitch and Mama book. Will you be writing a follow-up? I love the Penny Pitch and Mama videos. Will you do any renovations in your home? If so, will you film the process? So let me answer that for mom. <laughs> no, we're not going to. Yes, oh, I'm not going to. <laughs> so here's the thing, guys. Um, we are not doing anything really personal anymore. It is. It just does not work on our channel anymore. That's why we do prepping. I filmed my house last week spent a ridiculous amount of time on it and the hours. video was a huge bomb so we are all prepping all stockpile all getting ready for the end times now now we are working on other avenues for our income and if that will replace living on a dime for our income then we might go and just not worry about living on a dime and just do what we want and we might, in that case, go and do some other things. And and we tr we, we try. Will, yeah. We don't do actually a book or anything, but we do try to talk about things on you know on yeah. the live stream once in a while. And go to the website. I've written tons of things that I put on the website and talks about personal things that you know I've done. Yeah. Um, and so you can find all that kind of stuff. Really, nothing has changed. I no, mean, not, uh -huh. not that much that uh, need to do that. Grandma mm. says, I love your house. Thank you. I'm glad you did, but nobody <laughs> else did. So I, I'm done well, I'm fighting YouTube. Yeah, she I'm just, done fighting YouTube. I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah, see, YouTube, it, it just does get it. She put hours and hours yeah. into that video. Yeah. I thought it was unbelievable. It was a yeah. beautiful video. Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah. I thought it was one of the best videos she's done, yeah. but it just didn't do, you know. Yep. So I'm not doing it anymore. Sorry. It's, I got to just put my foot down. <laughs> well, she has to, she only yeah. has so much energy. So she yeah. has to put the energy in where it's going to do the most yeah. good and, and, you know, get the most out of it. Uh, what church were we shunned at? So it was just a church in Kansas in the seventies that we went to at the time. So it's and not know, even there anymore. So it's not even, yeah. and you know, it's not so it much really which matter. church it was. I have been in so many churches and people have said, well, our church would never, ever do that. I said the same thing about the church that I was in. I thought our church would never do anything like that, but it, it they do. They do. I don't care yeah. what denomination. I don't care what church. It happens. It's yeah. sad, but it does happen. You know, yeah, it's just it that's just the way this world is. Yep, it is. Thank you, everyone who liked the video and who likes the Penny Pinch and Mama series. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank Laura, you, guys. Would you love to hear more? Oh, sorry. She would love to hear more Penny Pinch and Mama. So, yeah. Oh. So <laughs> we just answered that. OK, Country Roads. I would... Ask the importance of the faith when she had to live frugally as a single mom. Do you feel that God guided you steps as you learned to save money? I have to say that every live stream I have watched, there was a clear presentation of the gospel. That is amazing. So do you feel like God led you on your steps? Oh, my goodness. Your, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have done. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that. With God taking care of me, I didn't. I didn't. I woke up in the morning and I didn't hardly move unless I prayed and 
every single thing. I mean, even down to the food we ate, everything. You know, I always, after going through what I did, I, and I'm not, I don't, I don't want this to sound condemning because this is just what people, normal people do. If you haven't been through it, you don't know a whole lot of difference, but I go to so many homes, people's homes and different places and stuff. And they ask for prayer over their food. You know, a lot of Christians ask for a blessing on their food, which is, you should, and it's perfectly fine. And I'm not, I, we did in our home for years and years and years, and you know, I still do. But what I would sit down and if I go to put something in my mouth, it wasn't just a, you know, typical blessing. I would be so grateful deep down in my heart that I sit, as a matter of fact, just this morning, I picked up my cup of coffee. I do every morning and I look at that coffee and I'm thinking, thank you so much because I know what it was like not to have the coffee. And I know that this coffee is coming from God. I know it is. And I, I appreciate every bite I put in my mouth, everything I drink every single day. I don't just say a glib blessing. It means so much that I even have the food. And I just couldn't do anything, any decision I had to make. It was just, and you know, but the other side of that too is, I, it, as hard as some pieces of my life look like, it was some of the most exciting time in my life because it was like God God was just shining in front of me all day long and continually. And I just saw everything. He was, he was so close to me. That's why I pray now when somebody has something wrong, I pray for comfort for them and for peace for them because that's exactly what God was giving me through everything I went through besides giving me wisdom. Oh my goodness, I didn't have the wisdom of the decisions I had to make, the stuff I had to do. How was I supposed to get money? I was in bed sick and I couldn't crawl out of bed. No income and two kids. What are you supposed to do? You don't think God was in that? I managed to live off of $8,000 that I got for selling my business that day, laying in bed so sick for three years. Now, who lives off of eight thousand dollars for three years? You know, something else was happening there, and I know it was God. So, yep. Um, what What do you do to prepare for aging and your health issues, if anything? Oh, you mean <laughs> like? Yeah, I know what she means. Like, you know, I have to realize that yeah, you just can't do it all. Yeah. Well, that. And like I bought a house just recently and I made sure there's no stairs in the whole house. So that's part of my preparing. It also helped because we just recently moved my mom out of her home and have been dealing with my mom who's 94. So I have an idea what's become hard for her. So I've put into tried to start practicing some of those issues for her. I got a shower that you can sit down in and take a shower with a hose that's removable, you know, little things like that practical to protect myself physically so that the kids don't have to take me too early, you know, and learn to fix meals. You're not going to be able to maybe do lots of cooking and stuff. So a lot of people have trouble changing their way of cooking and they still fix big, huge pots of stuff and things. I'm down to crackers and cheese sometimes for lunch and that's it, you know, and I've got to be, you have to be comfortable with that. You have to accept the aging process. Find, oh, get a hobby, especially for men. Do something. Find <laughs> something to keep yourself occupied when you're physically incapable of being able to move. Reading, hand sewing for ladies, you know, guys can take up whittling. I don't know. Ladies can take up whittling. Find something that you can do while sitting in a chair and that type of thing. Learn to learn do use YouTube on the computer if you don't have computer skills because not everything bad is bad on the internet. I get all kinds of fun stuff and information. There's comedians on there I watch, you know, that I just find crack up over. As a matter of fact, I drive the kids crazy because they know when I've been on, they're watching because I send it to them, don't I? Haven't I sent you a bunch this week? So yeah. do things like that. Yeah. Um, so I got this uh, window free off of the curb, off of Facebook. Somebody put, if you wanted it, come get it on the curb. And I got it on the curb. It took me eight hours to restore, and I will never do that again. <laughs> oh, that was a job. <laughs> that was a pain in the butt. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, 
And someone else, um, how did you end up being a single parent? My dad left. He left. Yeah. yeah. So she got divorced. Mm -hmm. Um, and somebody else wanted to know what constitutes on YouTube. How do I know a video didn't do well by number of views? Yeah. You can see the views. The algorithm kicks it out. The algorithm. They haven't been shared and stuff. Yeah. The algorithm tells you what people like to watch and what they don't watch. And people do not like watching our normal stuff, our average everyday stuff. They only want to watch the prepping stockpile um those kinds of things that stove behind us is a real 1950 stove right there go watch my video from monday or saturday no saturday go watch saturday's video and you can see us getting it i paid 50 bucks for it it was 900 bucks on ebay so i got a good deal <laughs> um let's see uh okay steven says it isn't a question, just to thank you. You are touching so many stories with your face, Mel, and love. My wife and I enjoy watching Tara, Mike, and yourself. My wife, wife and I have learned a lot and have done some adjusting, and we keep learning. Thank you again. Thanks. Yeah. Glad um, Doodle Tooth wants to know, do you journal? And no. if so, have you thought about publishing them? <laughs> no. I did years and years ago. I did a lot of uh, journaling. I don't know, up until I was about maybe 30 35. After my husband left, I didn't have time for it at all. You know, I was working so such long hours and taking care of the kids by myself that I just didn't even have time for anything like that. And but I before I moved all the journals I did have, I just threw them in the trash. I probably shouldn't have. I threw all mine in the trash. <laughs> I just threw them in the trash. We moved last time. I'm like, why am I keeping all this? I know, stuff? I, I thought care. the same thing. Um, do I plan on selling t-shirts? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. Thank you once again, everyone who's really liked the house videos. I appreciate that, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, I hate that saying. I can't, I can't believe that actually came out, out of my mouth. mouth. <laughs> oh my goodness. Michael's back there saying, he's laughing. He's laughing. <laughs> I can't believe I hate that saying. That saying I absolutely hate. <laughs> I don't know why I said it, because my son is in my head. My son says it all the time, driving me nuts. <laughs> do you do a personal Bible study every day, morning, noon, night? Do you do devotional or specific plan? Okay. <laughs> yes, sort of. Yeah, I do. I do. But my thing that I've learned after years and years of being told that you need to have a, like a, a special Bible study book or a special thing you have to do every single day, or you have to do this much. I mean, I've heard women that they get up. I, I remember as a young, young woman bride that this, they got, well, it was more than a bride because I had two kids in, but she said, I get, you always need to get up at least an hour before your family does so you can get dressed and do your spend time in the word and spend, you know, in the devotional. Another lady said, oh, I spend at least two hours in the morning before my family gets up and I'm sitting there, a new mom, and I, I get two hours of sleep at night. Tara, well, I wouldn't even get to bed after dealing with a colicky baby and Tara getting up two or three times until three o'clock in the morning. Tar would get up at five o'clock in the morning. That means I had two hours of sleep. So I was supposed to get up at four o'clock to do devotional. And these women, these I well-meaning Christian ladies, they said, you can do this and you've got to do that. And it drove, I, I felt so guilty. That's why we don't do women's. I felt so shows. <laughs> guilty because they made me feel like, what kind of a mom am I that I'm not doing this devotional? Now I prayed nonstop. I love the Lord with all my heart. But at that time in my life, I had three hours of sleep and zero energy. I could hardly I feed was so myself. Cute. You were so cute. She, you think you should have seen Tara as a toddler. I mean, this child was going constantly. I was type A from the start. <laughs> And talk about being worn out. And then I had a colicky, col colicky baby on top of that for my that son. That was my irritating brother. <laughs> no. He was so laid back, so sweet and quiet. <laughs> it was a good thing he was because, oh, my goodness. And so it it just made me feel terrible. And I thought, I will never tell anybody 
amount of time that you should be doing a devotional that you have to do this so much in this type of devotional and you have to do these things you have to do what's good for you right there where you're at when i was up rocking that colicky baby I would sing my hymns. I would pray to God. I would try to memorize one Bible verse, you know, or something. God, God appreciated that beyond measure. I was doing the best I can, could for the moment. Now, that being said, for a while then, after the kids got older, I would, usually I do it in the evening. I don't know why for years even when I was in high school and I did devotional then, I would use it like a little, there's a, it's called the daily bread. It's a little thing our church would give out the daily bread. And I would do the little devotional every day. And I usually didn't read just what they had in there. I, once I started reading in my Bible in the evening, I just kept reading because I was so fascinated with the stories and stuff. But so I started out for years doing it in the evening. My husband was a night owl. So after the kids got older, I would do my devotional when he was sitting up working or doing music. And I would do that until he got ready to come to bed. So it's just changed over the years now since I my kids are out of the house. My grandkids are grown. I'm not watching baby grandkids or toddler grandkids or helping out with them now. I have much more time. So I do spend a lot of time. I, I spend time. I do um, Oswald Chambers, um, My Utmost for His Highest is the name of it. I like that. for. I've used that for like 25, no, maybe more, 30 years. For a long time, I just it's a yearly one, and I just go over because I get something out of it so good every year when I redo it. But then I also read my Bible throughout the day. I just will be sitting there for some reason. I think, okay, what did Elijah do in this situ in this story? And I grab my Bible. And like today I was sitting, I read like three or four chapters reading about Elijah. It wasn't a, a Bible study per se. Now, since the internet has come around and I had to stop reading when I first got sick and it was frustrating because I couldn't even read my Bible or anything. Well, I'm very blessed now because of the internet. I can sit and listen to the preacher on Sunday. I'll listen to four or five hours of preaching on Sunday. You know, I've got the time. And so I do six hours every day. <laughs> well, I hate to even say that because, you know, I feel bad saying that, but I don't feel good on Sunday. And so I, I enjoy listening Somebody to said them. women are being so judgy. So that's why I said that. women are, well, women are very, very judgy and, you know, it, they have a standard up here that probably none of them can attain, really. I, there's cleaning ladies. There's two really well-known cleaning ladies that you guys, if I said their name, you know who they were, that tells women how to get organized and get their house clean, and you do it. Well, one of them said her house was a nightmare until her son got into high school. But that's, she didn't start cleaning her house. And she said, you all can do it. Even if you have little babies or toddlers, you can do this every day. But she didn't do it when she had babies. She didn't toddlers. do it when she had them. You know, she couldn't. But she tells moms that have baby and toddlers, you got to do this. And she lists about 10 things they have to do every day, no matter what. The other one, she's just, you take all your clothes out of your closet, you all this stuff, you know, and you can get organized. Well, Fast forward a few years after she first became really popular, she's got kids now. She said, I never realized what I was telling people to do that had kids. She said, it's a totally different ball game." Shannon, you guessed it. <laughs> and so, you know, you, I've always wanted to be so careful. You have got to adapt to your time of life and don't feel guilty. My pastor's wife years ago said, so many women have false guilt and that's how over everything from your house cleaning your meals to raising your kids to how long you do your devotional and she said that is satan's way of attacking women is with false guilt and so don't you even go there and do the false guilt you know you do the best you can if you love the lord and you, you pray, even sometimes my mind when I was sick was so numb, I couldn't even think of what to pray. And so I just say, God, help me. 
if you just say, God help me, if you can do nothing else in your day, do that. Yeah. Thank you everyone who likes my gray hair. I think a lot of people don't watch all the time. So that they come on, they don't realize I've turned Did gray. Did you turn gray? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Oh, here's a loaded one. I thought the last one was. <laughs> Have you forgiven your husband for leaving you and all that he caused the hard life for you and your kids. Oh yeah. Yeah. I had, and you have to do that just as soon as you can start dealing with it. You need to forgive because what it does is it destroys you. Yeah. It's like feeding not, yourself poison yeah. and expecting them to, to be harmed. Yeah. By and so it destroys you, not them. It hurts you, not them. They, they don't, you know, they have no clue. And so, and you can't do it on your own. You need to, if you have to ask every hour, you start getting thoughts about that person. You stop right there and say, dear God, I need your help right now. Help me to forgive. 30 minutes later, it comes up. You stop. I, one of our viewers said, I, she asked me a question. I answered it. And she said, I realize I need to be more, uh, what was the word she used? More active, more productive, uh, aggressive in her own dealing with issues, you know, dealing with biblical uh, scriptural things and spiritual things, instead of just sitting back waiting for God to do everything for you. He, he wants you to do your part. So if you have to stop every 15 minutes and say, take this thoughts out of my mind and help me to forgive them, then you go on. And, you know, if you can, um, sometimes if you can find a scripture that you can say over and over again when those thoughts start coming. It can be really simple, one line out of the Bible, uh, you know, like a forgiveness scripture. And do that. That'll help you a little bit, too. But you have got to forgive. And your testimony as a Christian will be of no use to you or anybody else. I think that's one of the things that's helped people listen to me a little bit more than maybe they would have is the fact that I have forgiven my husband and I did years and years ago. And it, it kind of tortured him a little bit for a long time. <laughs> the guilt, because I did forgive him. He didn't know how to handle it. He, he and a lot of his uh, people he knew, you know, that were uh, not Christians and stuff they would watch me. I mean, it was a whole big deal for a long time. I would even have some of his non-Christian friends. One, one of his, um, there was a couple he knew. The wife, she asked to come talk to me and I didn't know her from Adam. And I told my husband, well, yeah, he, we were separated, been separated for years. And she came to talk to me one day and she said, I want to know what your secret is. And I didn't know what she was talking about. She said, your husband, I've never heard a divorced man ever say one kind word about his wife and she said my husband and i sit there with him and the whole evening he does nothing not only does he say kind word he just sings your praises constantly that was a good testimony thing you know if you really want to have you you're not honoring god yourself or anything if you don't you have to have that testimony you is very very important i've even had people that didn't know that I was divorced. The way I talked about my husband was so loving and so kind and constantly, they would go for like a two or three years. I would know them and they never, you know, it was like people that I would go uh, to a group meeting of some sort, you know, and they just didn't realize. And finally they'd ask me, you know, something about him because they never realized that I was even divorced because I used kind words about him. I know they can be it. You've gone through a hard time. Trust me. I have dealt with a lot of women. I know some of the things and men too. And different people have gone through different horrendous hardships, but you can eventually forgive, not on your own, but like I said, asking God to help you. Did I get and they said, did I forgive? Yes, I forgave my dad. Yeah. So, um, and, and I was, I was so thankful for that because it would have destroyed my children's life. And I think that's the greatest blessing of that. I think you saw me forgive. I think that maybe helped them a little bit. I, I knew of a woman, 
She was so angry at her husband, she made her children sit in the back seat of the car with a box of pictures, like her wedding pictures and pictures of their dad, and had them sit there and tear those pictures in two. Now, I'm sorry, wives and mom, this is not a good thing. And they wonder why the kids, when they That's grow up wrong. from divorce, yeah. are in so much trouble. I've got two of the, I, I'm not, That's this is going to sound prideful, I know. My kids, but they're strong Christians now. I just sit back in amazement what how they talk about the Lord, what they do for the Lord. <laughs> no, but let me say on that, forgiving does not mean reconciling. No. Oh, no, not at all. Just because you've forgiven does not necessarily. Now, sometimes it does, but it does not necessarily no. mean that you're mm -mm. supposed to reconcile. No. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you're to be a doormat or a uh, you know, punching bag, yeah, anything like nothing that. Nothing like that, so, no. And you don't even really have to have a uh, contact or no. anything necessarily. No. Forgiveness is just a thing in your yeah. heart, you know. And yeah. you, uh, somebody asked on the Bible verse, once saved, always saved. I am putting a link to gotquestions.org because that's kind of a long thing and we're trying to get through questions here for mom. So I put that link in there for you. Yeah, that'll... Um, if you had to start your life at age 20 again, what would you do differently? You know what? I, and I think part of this is God too. I can't think of anything I regret in my life at all. I really can't. I would marry my husband all over again because he was the one that God wanted me to marry. I mean, if you think about it, I wouldn't have had the children I had if I hadn't married him and they wouldn't be the strong adults that they are, the ones that love the Lord, the things that, that they talk about God on Facebook, YouTube, they both do stuff all the time. I don't even know how many people they've influenced. So if I hadn't done married him, who knows what people wouldn't have been saved or didn't, you know, draw yeah. closer to the Lord because of that. So I really don't have any regrets of, yeah. You know. And if you guys need a free Bible, we give free Bibles right here. Mike will put the link in. Just use the coupon code free Bible. We have that for you if you need one to learn how to forgive. <laughs> you know, and um, learn to do God's will. That's that's if you can learn that you will, you can look back on your life with no regrets because everything you do is what God's wanted yeah. you to do. And if you slip up once in a while, if a majority of the time you're doing it right, then and you slip up we'll all slip up once in a while that you know it's not that big of a deal because you um god understands that we're human and we're going to make a mistake once in a while and he never holds that against us at all so judy says what helped me was realizing the person did his or her best it may have been a horrible best but that was all the person was capable yeah. of well yes and no kind of a lot of people use that as an excuse to allow people to continue the bad behavior. Yeah, you can't and do that's that. that's not okay. No, that part's not. It's one thing, like, if I was unforgiving for mom because we lived in such poverty and I was holding it against her because we were in such poverty and it was her fault because she didn't get a better job. She didn't marry a guy who was not a dork. But that there's a difference between that and willful sinning causing the issues. So like mom, she truly did the best she can. Not that I ever held it against her or anything, but I'm just using that as an example. My dad, willful sinning, causing the pain in the family that continued to happen. You can forgive, but they're not doing their best then. They know better. And once you know better, you do better and yeah. you can do better. And so the thing is, Yes and no on that. How I one. kind of react to it is I felt I feel for anybody that's living in continual sin, I feel very sad for them because it's it's an anguish. I don't think all of us can really, unless we're doing it ourselves, understand it. It really is an anguish. But that being said, that doesn't make it right. Yeah. You have to change everybody can change. I don't yeah. think people realize they use an excuse, whether you're a drug addict, an alcoholic, you know, any kind, anything, whether you're a gossip, you can change, whether you have a temper, you can change. It's hard. All of those things are almost unbelievably hard, but it can be done. 
And Sharon says, she said something about she hasn't forgiven someone. I don't remember the situation, but she says it's hard to forgive people who are never sorry. The Bible does not give conditions on mm -hmm. forgiveness. You got to do it. It doesn't say you're, yeah. you're to forgive them only if they're sorry. You're to forgive them, period. And you know what helped me too a little bit is not that I wanted vengeance necessarily, but God God will not, sometimes we feel like when they do something, it's like, are they, is there no justice? Don't, they're getting everything. There's no justice here. And until I realized, God finally told me, I will vindicate you. It's not that I really wanted anything horrible to happen to my husband, but I wanted justice kind of, you know, it wasn't fair that he hurt me and my kids. It what that wasn't fair. And and I was having trouble balancing that. And it was like God said, I will vindicate. And, you know, my husband, I Tara saw him last. I just saw a picture of him. It was pretty sad, wasn't it? He was like a shell of a man. It, and, um, yeah, he really had no life. It was horrible. So don't wait till they feel like they're sorry if you're waiting for vindication or anything, because it'll, it'll, God does make things right and he does justify things. Yep. Um, what shampoo do you use? Your hair is gorgeous. I use baking soda. I put a tablespoon of baking soda in an ounce of warm water. Just pour it on, rub it in, rinse it out. Yep. Um, give oh, and there's a there's a link on go or type in baking soda shampoo or shampoo on the website, and I tell in there how to do it. Why am I doing the website tonight so much? I don't um, know. Sharon, even if they're dead, you still have to forgive them. Yeah, yeah, because like we say, it's not for them; it's for you, you know, and you're still here, so it's. Um, somebody wants to know, Mary Kay discontinued the oil control stuff. What do you use now briefly? Well, I, I don't have to use oil control now because I'm older and my skin's drier. And to be honest, I have looked everywhere for my granddaughter for a long time because she needed that. I couldn't find it. It's hard to find. Uh, I think, I don't even know what brand it was because it's been a few years now, but you just have to look for another line, maybe type in oil control. And once again, it has to be oil control, not oil free. And you have to use oil control foundation and oil control moisturizer. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. So Tammy, if you go back at the beginning of the show, we answer mom's Bible study time with God. So that question was answered. Heather, yes, I let my kids watch TV and play video games. Way too many. But, you know, <laughs> that's life in 2022. Yeah, uh, but when they were younger now, you did control. I did it until they were, until COVID hit, they yeah. did have a limit. And then when COVID hit, we didn't do a limit. But my kids were older. When they were little, they didn't just play yeah. on the computer all and the time. I think I think that made a difference because they yeah. got used to interacting with Tara and Mike or me if mm -hmm. I come over. And yeah. that was a habit that was set with them when they were younger yeah. that they didn't have to be on there. They could interact with us. They like interacting with us, you know, a lot. Yeah. And so I think that's helped them now that they're older. Um, also, we don't let them play alone and do it themselves. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't allow the kids until they're uh, 16 they do not get a computer in their room or phone or anything in their room by themselves with the door closed. Mm -hmm. So like the, whatever kid is that age, younger than 16, it like the computer is in the main part of the living room. Then at 16, if it's in their room, it has to be facing the door and they have to have their door open with the computer facing the door. So we do, I mean, we don't go in and monitor everything they do, but we do have limits put on those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Bible verses on vindication. You know, just Google it. But let me. There's tons and tons and tons. Yeah, of, let me see if I can find one real quick here that 
Psalm 41, 3, um, Psalm 10, 18, uh, Luke 18, 7, uh, Job 13, 18. So just Google Bible verses on vindication and you can find a whole bunch of and them. Be careful because when I talk about kind of vindication, you have to... God's vindication may not be what you want. Yeah, and you ha can't want the vindication because you're mad and angry and you hate them. You don't want vindication with that type of a heart. Uh, you, It's more of a just a comfort or a rest when you feel like you've been, sometimes you feel like God's, it, you've been unjustly abused or used or and that doesn't feel right. And it just helps a little bit in that. But you don't necessarily, I never, ever, as a matter of fact, I used to pray that uh, for my husband because I knew what would happen to him. And I knew about what God would probably do to him with God's vindication. And I would pray to God that that it wouldn't be so bad, you know, that that he would come that he would come back to God, you know, because I didn't want that, even though in one one sense it feels it's hard to balance this, but one sense I had to rest in that that he would get it, but at the same time I didn't want him to have it. Because yeah. you God's vindication is horrible, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I put the link to where I found some Bible verses on vindication for you guys who said your Bible doesn't say the word vindication. Different translations have different words for it. So it may not use the exact word vindication in your translation. But of it's the, the Bible. general idea so. of this justice, you know. Tammy, I used your cookbook and made the honey baked chicken. It was the best chicken ever. 25% off right now, guys. That's yes. one of our most favorite recipes That's that people like. That's our top recipe mm -hmm. on our website most of the time. Um, let's see. Okay. So do you like your new house or do you still have buyer's remorse? <laughs> I'll let you answer that question <laughs> and then I'll tell the truth. <laughs> Oh, guys, I really have struggled with this house. I don't know what's going on. And I've been praying about it and trying to figure this one out. I do not know. Uh, but I'll, I will say in so the, the past. No, she well, not yeah, in the past her. week, actually, I was going to kind of tell you guys about this because I hope it, this is almost another video, but I'll try to be fast. I have I have been struggling. I can't get. I just can't get it to work. But part of it, too, is my mom's been here, which I don't mind. You know, it's fine. But it's like I've had for six months, I had three months of company. Then I was sick twice with the thing that's going around. So that knocked me out each time for almost a month. So we're talking like five months. I was, you know, I nothing. I had I had nothing. I had nothing left in me to <laughs> function hardly. And so. It was hard, and so it was about a week, week and a half ago, I was sitting there, and I thought, you know, dear God, I don't even know what to do here, because Tar kept saying, just hang a picture on the wall, get a picture. Well, I couldn't even find where the pictures are. I only had two or three. Couldn't find them. She kept saying, you just need to hang a picture on the wall, and that'll get you started, and I just thought, I can't even think where to hang a picture. I didn't know where now, my couch is Now, to my going. defense, I didn't just go in her house saying you need oh, to hang no, a picture. Oh, no, she wasn't bad about it. She was complaining. She wasn't bad about it. That she didn't like the house. She was just trying to help me out. She was just trying to help me out. So all I was saying no. was just start with one Yeah, picture. no, she wasn't being like that. And so I said, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know where to start for the first thing. And I said, all right. It just dawned on me out of the blue. And this is what you guys have to start doing. And I've known to do it for years, but I just had a lapse in it for some reason. And God will, God's there to answer every prayer. And I, you feel guilty. Well, look at what's going on in the world. If I pray for God to come up with a recipe for me to use for dinner tonight, because I'm just exhausted. I can't think of anything. I can't ask God for that. Yes, you can. <laughs> You really can. Yeah, you can. You can. And I was sitting there and I thought, well, I can't ask you to help me get my mind going so I can decorate this house, get things finished, unpacking, get the furniture. My furniture literally until a week ago looked like a U-Haul had just come in and dumped everything in my living room. And so 
And I said, I hate this, dear God, but I have to ask you to help me figure out what to do here. I'm everything. The life is out of me. I can't think my, I don't have one brain cell to figure out where to put one anything at all. And so I said, I'm just going to ask you this. I feel like it's something not important, but I'm going to, you told us to ask. We have not because we asked on. That's a, that's a verse I even used. And so then I went to bed. I got up the next morning. I picked up a clump of fabric I'd had laying on my kitchen table for what? Ever since I moved in a year ago, just about laying on that table. And I picked up and I walked it in and I laid it on the arm of my couch and just went over to sit down, figuring out, you know, getting ready to do my devotion for the morning. And I sat there and I looked at that and I thought, oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. That fabric was gorgeous on the couch. I think I'll make it into pillows, you know, pillows, slip covers for the pillows. I jumped up. I made slip covers for my pillows. And then I went the next morning, I went and found a little time. I'll tell you, I won't do it this time. But next time we do some kind of video, I'll tell you about my little canisters. I've been trying to find a canister. You think a canister is going to change your life? trying to find it. I went to a garage sale. There was not just a canister, but a whole little canister set for 75 cents. Can you believe it? I brought it home. I rearranged like five or six drawers in my kitchen to make it easier. And every since then, every day I've got up and I've been working my buns off. I almost have my sewing room together. It's about 90% together. It's like something happened since that day. And I don't know what it was. I don't know why. I think part of it, I was just exhausted from my mom being here and me being sick, you know, and just the move itself. I'd never had a moment for a year just to crash and burn. And it was just building up. And I just finally maybe got a little bit rested after my mom left and was feeling better. And so it was just, it's a bit amazing. So I'm, I'm getting there. I'm actually the past week, Tara hasn't even seen, she hasn't been over to my house for a while. So she hasn't seen, I even found, I've been looking for certain flower, uh, uh, inexpensive um, flowers to make one flower arrangement even to try to do that. Couldn't find it. What did I find yesterday? All the flowers I needed to make, and they weren't very expensive either for my flower arrangement. So it's just been continually all day long for like a week now or more. Uh, Charles, can you tell us why we should be saved and how to be saved? Well, so you need to be saved because Jesus died for our sins because God is a righteous God. And he you think of him as a judge and he will judge us for our sins. And so somebody had to pay for those sins before jesus came um the jews would sacrifice animals for that sin well jesus died on the cross so we don't have to do that anymore and all you have to do is believe that you're a sinner know that jesus died on the cross for your sins and he rose again on the third day repent and give your life to him and that's all you have to do it goes back people think that god's love nothing but love he just loves that you know, loves us and so everybody's going to go to heaven but like i said earlier he's a just god that's why in deep in our hearts if if a, if a man molests and kills a child we want justice for that child we want that man to pay we want him to go to prison or whatever for doing that that's in our hearts because we're made after God. We're in, made in the image of God. And God is a just God. God has that in his heart. So in order, so we don't have to pay for those horrible sins and go to hell. God went and sent his son. He loves us that much. He knew there had to be, he had to be justified somehow. God had to do something so he could have his, you know, to be justified. So his, he sent his son to die for us and it's free and it's a gift and you don't have to work for it. All we have to do is ask him to come into our heart. You know, that's all we have to do and ask him to forgive us of our sins. And once you accept Jesus, God see, doesn't see those sins anymore. They're gone because they, it's totally paid for. It's like you are getting condemned. God was the judge and he said, I'm sorry, you sinned, you're having to go to hell. And Jesus walked in the court door and he said, I'll cover it for them. 
I will take the punishment for them. And that's what he did on the cross in a horrible way. And now he says, just accept it. But God's not going to force it on you. You've got to just yeah. open your hand, you know, just accept it and receive it. And baptism does not get you into heaven. Baptism is a sign to the world that you have given your life to Christ and you're going to live for, for him. him. So if you're baptized as a baby, that doesn't that doesn't mean you're just going to go to heaven. You have mm -hmm. to actually give your life to Christ and, and accept him. So Because that's kind of like a work. And you yeah. can't do anything. No work whatsoever no. can you do to get yourself to heaven. Yep. Yeah. Emmy wants to know how much to send the book to the Philippines. I'm really sorry we don't ship outside of the United States now due to custom issues. But Emmy, I put a link in there for a free Dining on a Dime Volume 1 ebook. Use the coupon code Dining1 in the link there and you will get a free Dining on a Dime ebook. Um, and that's valid for anyone. Um, okay. Let's see. Diane wants to know if you would be her mother. <laughs> she loves her advice for paying uh, off debt. Uh, uh, she, her grandmother was similar. She's 62 and lives in, in Missouri. <laughs> uh, Kimberly wants to know, how much do you like chocolate? Don't hold back. Oh, my word. <laughs> Kimberly, have you not been on our, like, our, our YouTube channel? Chocolate is like, what? Right up there almost with my grandchildren, you know? Almost. Almost. Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> here's chocolate. Here's for grandchildren. Uh, Regina I wants to know chocolate. what's your other favorite foods? Cheesecake. You like I, cheesecake? I've only had it, I think, three times, four times in my life. I love lobster. Yep. Love lobster. Yep. And I've only had it like three times. Oh, it's on sale this week. We should get one. Yeah. Um, what inspired the spelling of my name? T A W. -R her dad. Her dad did that. So, okay. So I heard dad said yeah. that he saw Gone with the Wind. He did. And added a W? Yeah. Okay. I've been telling everybody that, but well, then I was like, well, is, is that Tara, the truth? It's Tara, the name of her yeah. her plantation. Yeah. And he wanted but a little Tara bit different. But it's Tara in the movie. It's well, not, I listened it's and it didn't. Oh, it is? Huh? Okay. Yeah, it's different. It's terrible. Okay, sorry. Yeah. And so he, he just wanted to add that in there to make it a little bit different. Um, Preppy for Heaven, Tara, I watched your video of your house. It was beautiful. I just wondered why there are no pictures of Jesus in your house, but you have lots of gnomes everywhere because I think that that's idols. And I know I'm going to get criticism saying, well, you have all these gnomes, but you have no pictures of Jesus. I don't idolize my gnomes. She doesn't bow down They're, and worship and pray to her gnomes. They are cute little garden ornaments. Like that having I flowers in your house all cute. over. They're mm -hmm. cute. But if all of my gnomes totally went away, which they did for like two years because I packed them all up because thinking we were going to be moving, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. I, I have absolutely, if all of my gnomes left today, I have no problems. But... I think pictures and even videos, I'm to the point now where I think that is idolatry. Jesus. And I don't want to have statues, images, those kinds of things of Jesus who I consider my Lord and Savior. To the you, point you where- You really don't need them for any reason. No. You know, because you can- He's in your yeah. heart, so you yeah. really don't need him. And I will say, I watched a video on The Chosen, trying to figure out where I stand with that. And I will say, that is one of the reasons why I wouldn't recommend watching the show The Chosen. I wouldn't recommend watching shows like Mom's Never Seen the Passion, anything the like passion. that. Here's the problem. You humanize Jesus, and we cannot fathom. We don't. We can't even fathom the glory that he brings for us. And when you put it in movies, videos, pictures, I think we lower how much he's done for us and how, how big and how great mm -hmm. God is and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And I think we marginalize it. That was the word I was trying to say. We marginalize it by doing that way. So that's why there's no pictures. Well, anytime anyway, humans so. try to do things like that, they sometimes don't get it accurate, you know? Yeah. And they do it from their human mindset, make these things from their human mindset, from their sinful 
mindset too in some yeah. cases not all cases but you know yeah. some cases and so that translates into these things and it kind of loses the true meaning the true impact like tara said compared to just reading things in the bible you know i don't watch docu uh i wouldn't like i said i have never watched movies about about just about jesus like the pa passion and those types of things he's so real in my heart you know it would be like them taking a making a movie of tara i'm her mother and somebody said well we're going to make a thing of tara from what we know from her youtube channel and put it up there and i'll sit there and i'll see no that's not that's not what she really did that's not what she's really like you know she's not that type of person they're getting one thing she said or one thing she did and they're getting it translated all wrong and they don't understand her and so as her mother i understood understand her a little bit more you know not perfectly but more so that's what happens with those things with jesus yeah um and i have other reasons for not recommending them but i do not personally recommend that people watch the chosen i've talked about that before so if you wonder why, just Google it. There's plenty of YouTube videos on it now. Um, I've been saying this since it came out, though. So um, just so you, you know. Guys, use discernment. Yeah. You need to start practicing discernment, especially now. I was thinking that today. It is so important. that, And you have to build. It's like any other skill. You have to use it over and over and over and the more you use it, the stronger it'll get in your life and the better you'll be able to discern a lot of stuff better if mm -hmm. you use discernment. Yeah. And you've got to get it now, especially now to tell evil from good, you know, and that yeah. type of stuff. Oh, uh, what do you do for fun and entertainment? Oh, my goodness. What? Well, <laughs> I don't do anything for fun. And, you don't no, do anything. I, yeah. Well, part of it is with my chronic fatigue. I just... You know, sometimes I'll go with the kids if they have something special downtown since we moved to Sheridan. You know, I'll go do special activities down there. Uh, I mostly lo I love to read and I like to do hand sewing. And I'm pretty I'm pretty much a homebody. So I can relax and enjoy doing that time, type of stuff, you know. And I do watch like TV or stuff on YouTube, just movies and things like that. So... I really don't do anything physical because I can't with my chronic fatigue. Uh, it used to be when the kids were younger, the grandkids were younger, I spent a lot of time, you know, doing stuff with them when I could. That was just doing fun things. But other than that, I don't really do a whole lot, I don't think. Do I? What do nope. I do? Nope. nope. <laughs> I just like relaxing at home. I really do. I would go to Quilt B and things like that. I, years ago, I used to go to ladies' meetings, but they've gotten different now, so I don't go to them quite. It's turned into a wine fest. Lucky. Oh. <laughs> I shouldn't have mentioned it, huh? <laughs> Another pet peeve, just to say. Um, let's see. You both are amazing. No wrinkles, no signs of aging. We both wrinkles. look aged. Thank you. Great. Thank I you. do have wrinkles. So I looked, I thought, oh no, I'm actually wrinkling. Yeah. Uh, since moving, what is your favorite thrift store garage sale items you found in Wyoming, the thrift stores in Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> so Wyoming is not real big on the thrift stores, not like Colorado was. And I only think that it's because Colorado people are so rich and they're just always dumping stuff, to be honest. And not that people in Wyoming aren't rich, but they're, they're just, just they're of the mindset yeah, to use it. They buy up, a lot you know. of stuff, and, but they do have good garage sales here. I yeah. like their garage sales; they're better than the garage ones in sales Kansas. Are here. Yeah. So they've got I've gotten tons of stuff for free. What was it? Almost a the whole back seat and the floor of the back seat on one of the garage sales was full of free stuff that yeah. we got. So yeah. one time. Uh, I have no idea what the sermon thing is. I don't know what you're talking about for prepping for heaven. Uh, so I guess if you want to elaborate. Um, and there was wrong, wrong tab. Barbara says, thank you for having this YouTube channel for everyone will be okay in these trying times. Yes. You guys are so sweet. We've got the, yes. we got the very, very best viewers. What? And you know, I want to thank you too. Sometimes we get so many questions on here and stuff. And our viewers that have been here on a long time, they'll pop in and if somebody says, how many kids do you have? They'll pop in and answer. And we appreciate you guys doing that and helping us out. 
do you think it's worth the prep freezer meals? No, but if you want to do it, go ahead. If it works for you, do it. Yeah, but I, it doesn't any work of this me. stuff that we tell you, you know, if it's working for you, keep doing it. You, no. Whatever works. How do you know God is not a myth? All you have to do is look outside and see his creation. <laughs> And no, and he's worked in our lives. Yeah, I was going to say the biggest thing. Lives, so. I just sit, I just stand in awe every day of different things, little things and big things that they were like many miracles. You know, they're just they're not coincidences. They they're just every day yeah. something happens. Yep. Yeah. Lulu, there is nothing wrong with having a picture of Jesus in your home. He came to earth as a man, and his representation is not making an idol. Do what you believe. It is not right to be judging. Do not care, or careful. Do not judge others. We aren't judging. I'm telling you Tell that I we think do. <laughs> a picture of Jesus, a statue of Mary, those things are idols. I believe that's what those are. Now, you go study idolatry in the Bible. Read only the Bible and study it and Exodus decide for yourself. Huh? Well, yeah, Exodus 20, verse 4, right there. So study it for yourself. I'm not judging you if you have a picture of Jesus hanging on your wall. <laughs> My goodness. And, so, you know, be careful on this. And I don't know how to say this tactfully, but if you're doing something usually, okay, let me put it this way. If someone comes to me and say, I don't, believe this or I don't think a person should do this uh, and it's something that I do that I think is okay to do and right I don't react in anger when they say that to me because I feel good in my heart that what I'm doing is what God wants me to do and I feel comfortable with it and if it's wrong I know he's going to convict me and if it's maybe I want to think about what they said I'll say dear God show me you yeah. know if this is wrong give me convict me about it. But I don't react to that person in anger. Why? Because I have confidence that what I'm doing is right. And it doesn't really bother me too much, you know, when they say something like that. So sometimes we can almost tell when people, the people that are secure in their faith and their belief, they don't usually react that strongly in anger or frustration or uh, condemn the other person, you know, type of thing. So I want you to think about that. Um, if if you're, you know, you ask God about it. Don't listen to us. You yeah, ask God Bible. what you should do. This is what we do, and this is our opinion, you know, yep. because we've been asked. And if you don't have a Bible, we give them away for free. Livingonadime.com. Go to the shop, click on free Bible, use the coupon code free Bible, and we will send you a free Bible. It is easy to read and it is large print. And um, let me see. There was something else on here that I missed and I don't know where it goes. Uh, oh, yes. Um, nope. Somebody asked about a stove to heat in the winter. I can't find the comment now. Um, so I don't have a particular one. I know the little buddy heater. My son is a, lives in an RV, tiny house type thing. He uses the little buddy heater sometimes that has little propane tanks. I've heard those are really good. I'm going to get us one for the winter. They don't do a huge amount of space. I mean, but they do pretty good. He stays really warm in his, in his camper. So um that's the only one that i've heard other people recommend but i don't really have any recommendations so and i would have more than uh one type of thing to heat with if you possibly can Yeah, if you can get a wood stove get one yeah if you can get a wood stove that would be good yeah. but you know like tar said earlier have a tent because if you don't have anything else you can burn a candle not at night while you're sleeping of course yeah. but you can burn a candle inside a tent with all the body heat it can keep you warm so you can have the little buddy heater if you run yeah. out of propane then you've got your tent so you've got one or two different things mm -hmm. yeah and um uh, for cooking, um, I'm going to do a video on that. I know I've been saying that for six months. I've been putting it off because I know it's a video that's not going to do well, but I know I've told you guys I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. But just get one of those little um, alcohol burners. That's all you have to do. Just get the little cans of alcohol. You can take a corningware and put like your instant pot grate on there and put the little can on there and then put another grate on top and you can cook on that. You can use a rocket stove. We have a video on how to do a rocket stove. Um, and 
don't worry about cooking. Make sure you have foods that you don't need to yeah, heat up. At least for at yeah. first. Yeah. Um, I'll do a video on it. I've just been putting it off because I know it's not going to do very good. And I'm like, ugh. But I know I told you that. And I'm sorry, guys. Um, okay. And let me see. Okay. So, yeah. So, for cooking, I would just get like an alcohol burner or something like that for in the house if you want. Um, and... Um, uh, yes, actually I am. Okay. Oh no, Mike, I'm about out of battery, but this might get a little, um, can you come here and plug me in? Um, okay. Here's the thing about the chosen. Do your research yeah, and decide think. for yourself. Yeah. First of all, I'm not telling you not to watch it. If you feel that you would like to watch it, you may. But here's the thing. You do not need a TV show to bring you to Jesus. You need the Bible and you need God. And if you want Jesus and want to learn about him, the best way to do that is to read the Bible and pray and ask him to reveal himself to you. Okay. Now, here's the problem I have with the chosen. And I'm going to state it again because it's a big thing going around. And I know. But first of all, the show is not based on the Bible. I know it. it is a rough draft of the Bible, so to speak. It's like the Ten Commandments with Charleston Heston. Yeah. I wouldn't watch that either, actually. Yeah. Um, and um, first of all, it's not biblical. Okay. It doesn't follow the, the, the Bible. Let me say, one of the videos that I watched was from Wretched. Go watch his video on The Chosen. I found another one that was excellent, and I should have looked at the link. But um, the other things are... <sighs> okay, let's get back. But they use Catholics for their um, advisories, advisors. They use a Catholic priest as an advisor. I do not believe the Catholic faith follows true biblical salvation getting to heaven. Um, I know that there's a large Mormon influence. I personally know some of these people personally. I have met them in person. They are wonderful people. They are wonderful people. I absolutely love them. I really do. I'm good friends with some of them. But when Dallas Jenkins says that the Mormons and the Christians have the same Jesus, we don't. I'm really sorry, but we just don't. Um, the Mormons believe that Jesus was an actual man. He's not. He's the son of God. And we believe that he came down as the son of God, period. Also, um, yes, God. yeah, he is God. <laughs> Jesus is God. Mormons do not believe that Jesus is God. And um, the other problems that I have is people are turning it into idolatry. They're going to the chosen instead of the Bible to learn about the Bible. I have problems with their marketing. They have a new marketing campaign that is... Do not watch The Chosen. Go watch it for yourself. I think that it's blasphemy to be using Satan in commercials. To advertise your Christian show. To advertise show. your Christian show, if it's actually a Christian show. It's wrong. I'm sorry. Now, like I said, I personally know some of these people working on the show. I personally know people who really love the show. I am not wishing any will ill towards any of them or anything. This is from my research, what I believe, and this is why I would not personally recommend it. Okay. 
So, so you need to do your own and do what you think is best for you. Yeah, do your own research. Now, two things. I haven't watched the whole thing. I saw one little tiny blur and um, heard an interview. They they use, um, what is it, secular rock guys for their music? What were those guys? Yeah, yeah. That aren't Christians to write their music. They use men that aren't Christians and far away from, you know, Christian faith. And I listened to their interview when they interviewed these guys that wrote the music. And they say, we now this is where I had alarm bells go off in my head. They said, we love this show. This is people who are basically atheists, don't want, you know, nothing to do with God or Christ. But they said, we love this show because it makes us feel so good and we can relate so well to them. And I'm thinking, okay, it wasn't so good that we're coming to God. It makes me feel so that I don't feel guilty about what I'm doing wrong. And that is so bad on every level. It's yeah. like it makes them feel okay to keep sinning, the, you know, that type of thing. And so that's when the alarm bells were just starting to go off in my head. Well, then the other little thing, I think it was like where they had um, said Mary, Mary went with all the disciples and camped out on these trips or something with all these men. Mary went with all these men. Was she the only woman there or not? Well, okay. So that actually just yesterday, Mike and I were talking about this. So there is a Bible verse that says that Mary and other women, okay, other women went around. Now, Mike says that he remembers the chosen actually having the other women in there. I don't remember that. I thought it was just Mary herself. So this could be one of those things where we're wrong. Yeah, on, and so that's, that's why we say you look it up yourself because we don't know. But the other big thing that I have is that they they portray Jesus as human. I was just going to say he that. He makes mistakes. Some of the things, He's yeah. He's not right. Uh, that was going to be. He my, didn't uh, know what he was doing. Yeah. That's just not true. And in the couple of things I saw too, it was like he was patting the people on the head saying, well, that's okay if you sin. You know, I understand. And But he doesn't say it's wrong or come to me like he did the woman at the well, you know. He told her to come to him, basically. She, he didn't say what you're doing. I understand, you know, and that type of thing. I think it has a tendency to make a lot of people that are sinning to justify their sinning and say, it's okay, here's Jesus in the show saying it's okay what I'm doing, so I don't need to do anything about it. You know, I don't need to come to him. I don't need to repent of my sin or stop sinning. And that's one of the the undertones that I feel from it. Like I said, I haven't watched it a whole lot. Just a couple of clips and things that I have watched. I've gotten that impression from the, but um, all these things, you know, uh, Tara went and saw the passion. Mike went and saw the pat. My son and daughter-in-law did. Everybody I know went and saw the passion. I don't have a problem with that. I know for me personally, part of it was I love the Lord so much. Like I love my kids. Now, if, they made a move. If my child died on the cross, beaten in a horrible death, hanging there, awful, everything horrible. You can't even recognize him. I couldn't as a person. If that happened to my child, why would I want to go to a movie and watch them portray that? I love the Lord so much, and it breaks my heart to even talk about what he did for me. Why would I want to go to the show or a movie and watch that happen all over again? I can't, I can't deal with it. So, you know, it, we're, we're different. Like I said, Tar and Mike and my kids went to. I will say that now that I have seen some of these things and I would not have done that if I would have known that back then, I wouldn't have watched The Passion. Um, but I didn't know better back then. And so... You know, I did. And I didn't but, think yeah. anything about them going. That was, you know, and, yeah. and we don't of you guys either. If you yeah. want to watch it. Yep. And I, I put a link in there to one video that I watched that was really good on why um, why I don't recommend it. I was trying to find there was another one that was uh, really good and I can't find it now. And I don't know if the guy changed the thumbnail or what. Shoot. 
but it was a really good review. And, you know, he was talking about those things also. But, um, you know, just research it yourself and, and look it up yourself and see what it says. And um, then you make the decision you make the yourself. Decision. Pray about it. But, and you choose. But I personally will not recommend it. And I personally will not let my kids watch it at our house. And so, you know, yeah. Um, so somebody says, if you can ask humans to pray for you, why can't you ask a saint to pray for you? Because the Bible is very specific that we are not to call on the dead. And that includes prayers. Jesus is alive in heaven, and I understand that the saints, if they gave their life to Christ, they're alive in heaven, but we are not to call on the dead, on human dead people. We are mm -hmm. only to pray to Jesus and God. We do not need an intercessor. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our intercessor for God. He is God. I think so, that, that happens a lot. They use him as an intercessor more yeah. than anything, and it, that's different than saying or say, will you pray for me because I'm sick? Yeah, I'm alive, first of all. You know, I'm not dead. And and I'm just praying that she will heal. But if you go to a saint to pray for somebody to get healed, why are you doing that? You just need to go to Jesus yeah. and ask him to, yeah. you know. Sandy says you can't judge the show by just a few clips if you watch it. Just don't forget to know your scriptures. I do know my scriptures, and I have seen yeah, all of, I just all of one, clips. all of two, and some of three. And I can tell you, I firmly believe it's it's it is blas blasphemy. Just, I'm sorry, it is. There were so many you know, scriptures they funny. messed up on just the clips that I saw. I thought, oh my goodness, I can't even imagine what the show whole yeah. show would be like. So and just I, that alone, I wouldn't. I saw an interview where the guys who do the music said, "Well, so what if it's not?" If it's not scripture, that doesn't matter. But doesn't that tell you something about it? Yeah, it does matter. This is people that work it matter. and make up the show, you know, and that's what they say about this. It doesn't matter, these things. Um, and oh, that's okay. okay if it doesn't matter to you, you know. Yeah, if you're not convicted, then don't. Then it's between you and God. Yeah. You're responsible. You, you don't are need going to, to be to us about it. To you just, we're just telling you. You just look it up yourself. And so, I mean, yeah, but we're not necessarily judging you. If you watch it and you come over to my house for a cup of coffee, I wouldn't think anything about it. Tara has friends, you know. I have really good friends who love it. And she's still friends with them. It's okay. <laughs> I still like them. I have Mormon friends that I truly love. I really love she does. these people. She really does. But for if sure. they ask me about my religion, then that's what I'm going to tell them. We're not going to be foot, angry we're not gonna at them, but I'm not going to with you. you I'm know, not going to tell them something that I don't believe either. That's what part of the problem is now. Nobody wants to tell the real truth. They try to tiptoe around everybody's feelings and everybody's this and that. And they don't, they're afraid to say the real truth because I might offend somebody or I might hurt somebody or I might come across as judging. If you love somebody, if somebody's in a, if I see you standing in a burning building, I'm not going to stand back and say, well, you know, I really think you should come out of there because you might get hurt if you stay in there. Well, I, you say, I like it here. And I say, I know, but I really, I will holler and scream, come out of there, you know, mm -hmm. get out of there. If I have to, I'll grab you and get you out of there because I care about you. It's people that don't care that pussyfoot around and don't, you know, mm -hmm. really want to be honest and tell the truth about this stuff. And let me say, someone said, I didn't know that um, the chosen was Mormon based. So the, the executive, the top producer is supposedly an evangelical Christian, but the producers under him are Mormon. So Dallas Jenkins says it's not an evangelical base, says it is an evangelical based show. But even if you take the Mormon influence, even if you take the Mormon part out, okay, don't, don't even think about the Mormon part. It still is not based on the Bible. Mm -hmm. It still portrays Jesus as flawed. Yeah, that he has lots of faults. It's like, oh my goodness. It still does not uh, portray the scripture as the scripture is saying what it, the Holy Bible says it is. They are still using satanic 
and they are using Satan to promote the show. Even if you take that all out. Okay. Now, here's the other thing that I have with it. And I could tell by the comments because this is what's happening right now. The true gospel is this. You are a sinner. Jesus died for your sins to pay the price so that God, who is the ultimate judge, would not judge you for your sins. If you call on the name of Jesus, believe that he died for your sins, that he rose on the third day, and you repent of your sins, and you give your life over to him, that is all you need to do to go to heaven. That's the gospel. Now, let me tell you, that is hated around the world. When you preach only the gospel, no other books, no other people praying for you, you praying to other idols, none of that stuff. When you preach just the gospel that you can get to heaven by believing on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior only, there are no works you can do. That is hated by the world. And let me tell you, as much as people love the chosen, it tells me right there they're not spreading the true gospel. Because if they were spreading the true gospel, it would be hated around the world. It would not be loved. Mm -hmm. That's my two cents. If you love it, I'm not going to not be friends with you. I'm not going to hate you. <laughs> I'm just telling you this is why I this is why I don't promote it and why I don't believe it. Okay. So what's the first book to be burned? Like when the Nazis yeah. took over, what's the first book? The Bible. The gospel is hated. The true it's gospel hated. is hated. And um, so uh, let's see. It kind of reminds me of the, like the one world order type thing that the Bible talks about because it's like the coming together of all these different things and everybody is accepting it. Like it's like the one world order, you know, we're going to yeah. get all the uh, Muslims and the uh, what the Catholics and the Jews and all the, you know, all this together. Yeah. And when everybody gets together and loves this things Kumbaya together and loves it, there's something yeah. that's probably not quite right. Yeah. The Chosen is not Mormon-based, but it is Mormon-influenced. Mm -hmm. So, and like I said, I personally know these people. I absolutely love them. They are wonderful people. They're very nice. They have helped us personally a lot, and I am very thankful for that. But if they were to ask me about my beliefs in Jesus, that's what I would tell them. We don't share the same Jesus. And so... Like I said, I absolutely love them. They have personally helped us a lot, but I don't agree that we have the same beliefs because we don't. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just part of being the world. Yeah. You, I'm not judging them. No. I'm not, but I'm not going to tell it them. Why is so wrong to have a different opinion now or a different anything now? It's why do people make such a big deal out of it that's horribly, you know, yeah. if we're not all agreeing on every single thing, you you don't even in a family have everybody agree on everything, you know, within a family. But we expect it now that every person should do the same exact thing and believe the same exact thing, have the same exact opinion. Yep. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, Revelations 22, 19. Thank you, Monica. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of the prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from things. Guys, That's you don't one. mess. Yeah. You don't mess with God. Yeah. <laughs> and his word. The Holy Bible is the only word of God. And let me tell you, you don't want to mess with that. It's mm -hmm. not pretty. Hell is not a pretty place. There is heaven and there is hell. And you are either going to go to heaven for turning your back on Jesus or, or you're going to go to hell for turning your back on Jesus or you're going to go to heaven for giving your life to Jesus. That's all it is. You can't do any works to get there. You can't be a good person. You can't be nice. 
You can't work out your salvation with fear and trembling without the salvation part. It's the salvation part that gets you to heaven. The works part is because you love Jesus and you want to show people his love. That's the works there is showing Jesus's love to other people and helping them. But that's not going to get you to heaven. Once again, the perfect example, the thief on the cross. He asked Jesus, you know, Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Did that thief do one bit of work? Did he do anything? He did nothing. He did nothing. But Jesus told him because because he, the thief, believed in Jesus. He told the other thief, he said, this man has done nothing. But we have, we deserve, basically he was saying, we deserve what we get. But he doesn't. And he'd accepted Jesus hanging on that cross. And Jesus says, you're going to be with me today in paradise. You're going to be with me. Now, where do anybody get works from that? You know? How can you even begin to get works out of that? That's a perfect example. Yep. Yeah. And um, Ephesians 8 and let's see, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, I think. Okay. Hold on. Let me just, because I don't want to misquote here. Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves it is the gift of god not by works so that no one can boast. boast that is why it is only by faith and not by works because god wants people to know it's him that has saved people saved us through jesus nothing that we have done we have too much pride we would boast Do what? Oh, yeah. Go read Galatians. Yeah. Mike said, go read the whole book of Galatians. Yes. Go read the whole book of Galatians. And um, it will uh, tell you mm-hmm. more about faith with um, and faith pray. alone gets you to pray. Pray before you read anything and ask God to open your eyes and yep. show you. And he'll either open your eyes to show you that what you believe is the right thing or he'll open your eyes to something different. Maybe, yeah. you know, uh, Cameron, I went to church and the pastor would not preach revelations because it would scare some members. Then you have a weak pastor and you need to find a different church. If I mean, I said, I know you're not going there now, but if you're going to a church like that, you shouldn't really go to a church like that. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get through questions here real quick, and everybody's going on. Uh, sorry, guys. Trying to see what I have left here. Mom and I's butts are numb at the moment, so <laughs> I'm just making sure there's nothing major that I need to guess. Stacia says, I get goosebumps every time I hear what Jesus told the thief. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you think you can work your way into heaven, you need to go read the story of the thief on the cross. Mm -hmm. That's it. He did nothing to get to heaven. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. There is nothing you can do except give, confess your sins, give your life to Christ, and receive him as your Savior. Mm -hmm. Receive him as your Savior. So The thief um, said, I deserve to be here. He confessed his sin. Yeah. And this man doesn't. And he was accepting Jesus that way. And Jesus told him that he would be in paradise. Uh, Tar and Jill, how come I'm just not getting it? Maybe you don't want to get it. You know, okay, if you're not. Just give it time. Yeah, don't worry about it. You pray. Like I said, you pray. You just pray and ask him. And if you sincerely, God is not going to ignore you. He's going to show you whichever Whatever way you need to know or what you need to know, he will show you. Just ask him. We never, he said, you have not because you asked not. So have, you may have to spend some time just sincerely in your heart asking him, you know. So, so on the other comment, this is our next time. She said, What if you prayed and you can sense anything? Yeah. And I was just saying, Well, that's what we were answering. Yeah, God doesn't yeah. always answer does. right when you ask Mike. Maybe say. not yeah. that very moment. Yeah. Sometimes some sometimes things aren't quite yeah. 
right in your heart yet. He knows the sincerity, how much, yeah. and it takes a while. But if you ask that first time, like with Mike, he will start working things in your life. He will start bringing people into your life, having things happen in your life that you'll get, it'll get clearer and clearer. And all of a sudden you'll understand. So an example is Mike grew up in a very abusive home. He was Catholic growing up. His family was Catholic growing up, but he always knew something wasn't right with that. And so he would have people come up to him on the street and say, do you know you're going to hell when you die? Give your life to Jesus now. And he's like, what? And just blew him off. Okay. Then he went to Texas uh, uh, University. The you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free was on one of the buildings. And he saw that and he's like, well, yeah, but what is the truth? And then he'd be sitting in his Catholic church and saying, well, wait a minute. If we're doing all these things to save ourselves, why do we need a savior? Little things just kept popping up all the time. So ask God to show you and he will start revealing Amazing. those things to you. And it may not just happen like poop. It can just happen. Just yeah, like it can. That, but it doesn't always happen just mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And so if you're sincerely asking, then He's I gonna would, start bringing you know, things in your life. Diana, what do you think about a crucifix over your front door? Or any doorways? I wouldn't do it. I consider it idolatry. You're relying on that, that cross, cross to protect you and not, not Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have a cross on my Kellum sign for our name and our house. I have a rock that I carved across in yeah. the Kellum sign, but that's but more pronouncing I was that say, I'm a Christian. I was going to say, it depends on the attitude and what you're doing yeah. with it, really. You know, there's nothing per se wrong if you're doing it because you want people to know you're a Christian. And that's your your faith, you know. And so... Um, I, I personally, I don't, I've never had a whole lot of crosses or anything. I got one I bracelet really, with a yeah. cross, but, um, you know, that's just, yeah, just like Tara said, it just, that's you, it's all in the mindset, the heart set. Why are you having that on there? Is that because you're hoping that's going to be protection for you? Or is that for people to see that that's what you believe, you know? So yeah. it, that's why we say you have to pray about this stuff. Some people are convicted about some things. Some, it doesn't bother them at all. And there's nothing, there's some little things like the having a cross or not having a cross. It's not a matter of life or death. Salvation is, and believing in Jesus is a matter of life or death. But some of these little things that we kind of just kind of start picking at, you know, um, there's a verse in the Bible, I don't know where it is, that if you know it to be sin and you do it anyway, then it's sin. But some people don't realize that something's a sin to them. And my grandma used to say, you know, it might not be a sin to me, but it's a sin. somebody else knows and thinks, well, this isn't quite right. And so they better not do it. Because if you do something that you know is a sin or that you feel convicted about and you do it, then that's really where the sin part, you know, gets bad. Yeah. Did that come um, out right? Did that come out right? Okay. So there's been a few people and we get this every time we talk about Jesus <laughs> who say I should stay away from religion and I have no authority to be talking on the religion. Let me tell you, if a brat, <clears throat> if a building was burning down and you were in that building, I would do everything within my power, including running into that building to save you especially if I knew you weren't a Christian. The building is burning down. The world is coming to an end. It may be sooner, it may be later, but it is coming to or an you end. You may die tomorrow. You may die in the next half hour. You may die tomorrow. You do not know when the end for you is coming, but it's coming. Not one of us is getting out of here. Well, let me rephrase that. If you're a Christian, you might get out of here alive by the rapture. We're not getting out of here alive. You have a one out of one, one out of one. You have a one out of one <laughs> chance of dying humanly. The only other way out of here is if you are a Christian, you get raptured up by the church, which if you don't believe, study your Bible, that's fine, but I believe that Jesus is coming back. And let me tell you, when Jesus comes back, 
and the seven year tribulation hits, it is literally going to be hell on earth. And we are trying to warn you and let you know that the only way to get to heaven is to know that you're a sinner Know that Jesus died on the cross for you and rose again for your sins. Repent of your sins. Call on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Period. We're not forcing I'm just you, telling we're you not the truth. forcing you to do anything. You can accept it or leave it. That's your choice. It's it has nothing to but one thing too, when you say that we keep talking about religion. Why we're doing that is we have a lot of people on here who are asking us questions about our faith. And that's why we're answering the questions. Why I'm do you, not criticizing why anybody. Why do you expect us to only answer questions about certain things that you want to hear about? We're asking, answering all the questions. Some people may not care what kind of shampoo I have on my hair, but I'm going to answer their question. So why should I not answer that shampoo question just because you're not interested? You know, if you're not interested, is that fine? That's fine. Take what you can out of our stuff, and just don't worry about the rest of the stuff. Why? Why is it concerning you so bad that we're talking about this? You know, there's a lot of people on here that seem to be liking to hear it, or wanting to hear it, or asking questions about it. So, you know, don't get upset with us. If, like I said, if you don't really like hearing about it, then you you don't have to stay here. The same way you with Jesus. You can either accept him or not accept him. It's your it's, choice. It's no skin off of our back, really. I mean, it doesn't affect us one way or the other. We're not trying to force you to do anything. And if you don't have a Bible to read for yourself, we get them for free. A New Living Translation, large print, easy to read, livingonadime.com. Go to the shop, click on free Bible, use the coupon code free Bible and read it for yourself. If you're Mormon... Read the Bible for yourself. If you're Catholic, read the Bible for yourself. If you're Baptist, read the Bible for yourself. If you are Jehovah's Witness, read the Bible for yourself. If you are Presbyterian, read the Bible for yourself. If you are Methodist, read the Bible for yourself. This is not something that you can't understand. God makes it very clear in the Holy Bible. You can read a new international version. You can read a new living translation. You can read, read an American standard version. You can read an English standard version. You can read the King James version. You can read the new King James version. All of those are good versions, but you have to read it for yourself. And if you want to prove us wrong, totally wrong on everything, or you want to show that we're wrong, read it through a couple of times. And see what happens. Uh -huh. Yeah, don't yeah, argue. Yeah, this is my channel. Why are you arguing? Yeah, it is. If you if don't, I that's what I'm saying. If you don't like it, go to someplace else. You know, go to another channel. And let me tell you, some people might be mad about this, but I have seriously considered turning Living on a Dime into a sole Bible channel. That's why we're working on other things. This is my channel. If I'm going to give you the truth about who Jesus is and what the Bible says about him, I'm going to do that on my channel. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that you can be good and get to heaven. Or say what you want to, want to hear. We're not going to tickle your ears with things you want to hear. And so it's okay. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I don't care. I don't. This is not about me. I don't understand it because I watch things that I don't agree with. I just go to another place to watch. I don't understand why people keep hanging on, you know, and arguing and getting mad and upset. So this tells me something's wrong. You know, something's wrong in your heart. Yeah. If you're getting upset with me for telling you what I believe on my channel, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. And I don't have enough time to sit and argue with somebody. On well, my I YouTube don't either. Channel. <laughs> and here's the thing. I there's heaven and there's hell. And you get to make your decision on which one you're going to. I'm telling you the way to get there. If you don't want to believe me, that's fine. It's totally fine. But I have told you, and I am responsible to God when I get to heaven for the opportunities that I was given to share the love of Jesus Christ 
and how he died for our sins. And I am responsible when I get to heaven and accountable when I get to heaven for not doing that if I was given the opportunity. If I'm given the opportunity, I'm going to spread the word. You know, and I, I just want to encourage other Christians. As a matter of fact, we were talking the other day with the pastor at church. And I think this is a big problem with Christians. Christians need to start standing up and saying what they believe. I am respectful of other people's religious beliefs. But if they bring them to me and they ask me questions and they want to mm -hmm. talk about it, I'm not going to tell them that I believe the same thing that they believe. If it's anything other than you're a sinner, Jesus died for your sins. He rose on the third day. If you give your life to him, he will be your Lord and Savior and you will go to heaven. If it's anything other than that, any books, any praying to anybody else, any saying anything ritual type scriptures, traditions, of traditions in the church, any of those things will not get you to heaven. I'm just here telling you because when I get to heaven and God said, you know what, Tara, she asked you on the show how to get to heaven and you didn't tell her. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have that on my shoulders. So, you know, and I know it's fine if you get mad at me. It just tells me right then and there that I'm right sharing the gospel with you because the gospel is hated. Because Satan does not want you to get into hell. He wants as many people yeah, down there. Yeah. Or I mean, Satan does not want you to get into <laughs> heaven. He wants you to go to hell to have as many people suffering with him as he can. Satan is real. He is not to be messed with. His demons are not to be messed with. But as a Christian, you are protected from that. And you can fight that. And one of the best ways you can fight that is by telling more people about Jesus. So I think we'll just leave it right there. <laughs> so guys, if you don't have a Bible, livingonadying.com, go click on the shop, click on the free Bible. We will send it to you 100% free if you use the free Bible coupon code. If you can afford it, it is only $9.50. Just our costs. We do not make a profit on the Bibles. Just our costs, if you can afford it, but we just do that so that because people asked us if they could buy it because they could afford it. So if you can't afford it, please use the coupon code free Bible. Visit us at livingonadime.com. We love you guys. We do we love really you. Do love believe you. it or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, good grief. All right. Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye, guys.